Now, the Felvin to catch those Condonites. Look at the army of the Whites. Oh, boom! Okay, so we have on the right side the Orange Engma player Mr. Smog against the Red Mordor player Avehave on the left side. Every time Red Elves and Goblins, this faction just way too strong. As we just saw, two Spider Squads won the game versus Man of the West there. Spiderlings are kinda strong, yeah. But I feel I feel like there are some matchups or goblins are gonna struggle big time. Against elves they struggle against you know Man of the West is kinda in a tricky spot right now. I wouldn't count them games against Man of the West that much. Uh, two slaughterhouses into the orbit coming up from the Mordor player. We see from Engma player Mr. Smoke on the right side, two males into the Hall of the Kingsmen. Uh, Warchan has been chosen from the spellbook. And Avehavio also has chosen the Warchan, which means buff and buff for both the sides. Early on, I'm assuming we're gonna see orcs fighting against Gundabad warriors. Which, of course, is gonna be won by the Gundabad warriors, but it, you know, it's fine for Mordor because Mordor doesn't wanna win early on. He wants to survive early on. That's the goal of Mordor. If the orcs, they cost only 80, command point, 80 resources and 30 command points, so pretty, pretty cheap units. Which is a really significant buff. I believe, you know, it's better. I mean, it's more impactful than the buff to the damage of them. They deal, of course, now 25% more damage in the version 8.4, but I believe the real buff is to decrease their command points from 40 to 30. Three orc pits now for the Mordor player. And to all of the Kingsmen for the Engma player. And he has to do that, right? He has to eventually keep up with the spam. And you cannot do that with only one Hall of the Kingsmen. That's not going to be possible. We're going to have Trial Master units now from the, from the first barracks. And of course, uh, Gundabad Warriors, I mean, and then we might also see some extra words later on. However, I also believe that Smoky, at some point, has to go for the transition into the Wolf Riders. And yeah, he can always take the fight... The only thing you need to always be careful about is your Trial Master. Because sometimes, if he goes for a flank damage randomly and can one-shot your, one your Trial Master, it's GG. Because if you lose this guy, it's over. You know? Avi is gonna use the Oryx. Do you see that? He's gonna place them in, the fr in front of the slaughterhouses. Do you see? He's gonna try to protect them both. And Oryx from the Engma player cannot achieve too much. But also the same situation here. Of course, the Gundabad warriors are going to be able to win, now even harder with the help of the Extroverse. So I like this choice from Smokey a lot. He knows he can't achieve too much, that's why he's not engaging. But alone, the fact that he's lurking around this area is putting so much pressure on Avehave. Now, he can always group this Gundabad warriors with this two and the Extrover. He will have four battalions in total. Then he can go for a war chant and deal massive damage. Ave is trying to get into the backline to target this Extroverse. He knows in the melee fight, he can deal a lot of damage. But nice positioning here from Smokey, I like that. He's getting behind the Gundabad Warriors. This way he's gonna make sure to take minimum damage. And look at this army from Smokey already. This is gonna hurt. This is gonna hurt big time. And he has only one archer on the field and not many units around. Smokey is going patient. He's going slow, but he's going big. I mean, this is going to be very effective now. Warchan is going to be potentially used here from Smoky. Middle push is incoming. Indeed, uh, Warchan, Extrovers, they can also deal damage to the buildings unlike Archers. And he's splitting them, which might be a mistake. Warchan has been used, but he was missing one of the Orcs. He will be able to target this slaughterhouse in the backside. It's going to be definitely taken down, but he won't achieve too much around this area. The Gundabats are dead. And Ave knows he cannot protect this slaughterhouse. Now Smoky is going to rotate around this area. Target this one. This one is hard to be taken down. Because look where this position is of the slaughterhouse. It's in front of four production buildings, right? So he's going to get some units on the field every couple of seconds. So if Ave Ave can protect this, he's going to be in a fight, fine spot. I like this. He was rotating from the top side to target this mill now. Which has zero protection for now. But Smoky has already a lot of units. So Oryx are dealing not too much damage to buildings. If he reacts now... And keep this. Oh, he lost the Trial Master Pikeman to the Vork Layer. Smoky. That's bad. He could have taken down the Creep and Money, but I believe his Trial Master got bitten <laughs> by the Vorks. So, pretty unfortunate here for the player from Ukraine. Can he take down this mill though? He's gonna try hard. But I believe he can still protect this. Yeah, he's gonna be able to save this mill for now. But it's badly damaged, so Avehavi eventually gonna be able to finish it off later on. 
Alright, um, Avi is gonna also secure the creep now because Smokey was feeling it. Builds me an army, worthy of Mordor indeed. Haradrim Palace getting upgraded to level 2. That's gonna give Ave Havi the chance to recruit some of the Haradrim Lancers. And no Wolf then just yet, as Smokey is just keep spamming units all the time from the Trailmaster, from the Hall of the Kingsman. Uh, but he was able to keep every single mill alive and protected so far, which is really, really nice. I like that. Now there is one Easter ring coming from the top side. He's gonna target this mill. This mill is gonna be definitely taken down. There is no way Smokey can save this. That's a massive Engma army. And look at this positioning. Do you see that? I mean, he is mainly and almost exclusively facing against orcs. So all he has to do, really, is tank the damage with the Gundabat warriors in the whole crown stance. And now you can use your Easter, uh, your extra words to deal the damage. But there are just too many orcs, and that's why Smokey is just retreating. He knows he has no war chance. So taking a fight against the Mortar army without a war chance might be a mistake. But this attack from Avi Havi is gonna hurt, actually, guys. This is gonna hurt. This mill has been taken down. He's gonna split one of his orcs to target the mill, which is unprotected. Clump against this mill, getting bursted down in a second. Smokey is desperately trying to defend this mill. But he's gonna lose a lot. He can even lose this one in the backside. That is Walder joining the battlefield as a sportive hero for the Trailmaster units. And orcs are already reacting to this play, and I believe Smokey is not gonna be able to deal the damage he's looking for. Tainted land was used from Ave Havi offensively. And Gundabad warriors are forced to disengage. But they might be giving up now the mill for no reason. Because disengaging from this spot gives Ave Havi the chance to clump against it with the orcs. However, he has only one orc here. This mill has been taken down as well. If he can take down this mill, that would be huge. This mill is going down slowly but surely, but a counter attack from the Turkish player Ave Havi. Hitting like a really absolute track. Level 2 mill, Easterlings are also targeting it. But I believe the fortress might be potentially able to save it. That's gonna be close, Volde is trying his hardest, the wolf riders are arriving just in time. But is this gonna be enough to save the mill? It's really low. If he destroys this mill, that's gonna hurt Mr. Smog big time. That's gonna be close, close, but yes, the mill has been taken down. He lost all the starting mills from the beginning of the game. And that's gonna put Mr. Smog in a really bad spot. He's down, can we change host he's saying? We can change course, of course, of course. He's calling it GG. And that's it. That's it. What a counter attack from the Turkish player. I mean, very well played. Very well played. And Turkey is leading now 1 0 against Ukraine. We have the Engma player, Ave Have, at the top side against the Orange. Man of the West player, Mr. Smoke, at the bottom side on the beautiful map, Plains of Linden. Um, let's see. I mean. You know, pretty much the basic start from, or the basic strategy from the Man of the West faction in the current meta on this beta patch is gonna be the soldier spam, right? Because of the 5 seconds uh, reduced build time of the Gondor soldiers. However, uh, I believe sticking up to infantry all alone against Engmam is not gonna be very efficient. Why? Because the wolf packs are still, even after the nerves, one of the best, if not the greatest, counter unit to the pikemen. So if you if you only focus yourself on soldiers and pikemen, the wolf packs from Engma are gonna bite you, you know. And the soldiers from Gonzo, they don't have the damage to take this wolf packs down fast enough. That means against soldier and uh, pikemen spam, wolf pack and wolf rider spam could be actually very efficient from Engma. That's why he has to eventually make a transition later on into something like a Gondo Knight from the stable or the archer range for the rangers or archers. But for now he's gonna spam soldiers. You can see they are coming out really really fast. And in a one-on-one -on -one situation I believe against the Gundabad warriors they should be also coming ahead. You know, but it's gonna be a close fight. It's not gonna be one-sided. So Gundabad warriors I'm assuming... But, you know, ideally you can always wait, and you should also wait. Why would you waste it? You don't have to rush it, you know, because if he goes for the Gondor Knight start, you can always wait for the last second and turn them into the pikemen right after. That's the benefit of the Stralmaster units, right? Wolf then is coming up for Ave Havi immediately. We're gonna have some more and more soldiers following up very soon. He's now building up some pikemen. And Gundabad warriors extra words for defense, okay. 
Looks like uh, Smokey is gonna group now with his units around this area and he's gonna use War Chant, uh, Rallying Call, rather. I think that's gonna be his plan, let's see. Rallying Call is gonna be used, yes. Red Streets, he's gonna wait for the next one and he's gonna turn them into the Wolf Riders. He might also be forced to use War Chant here defensively. Wolf Riders now. Yeah, that's gonna be a 500 unit, but I believe this mill is gonna be still taken down from the Engma player, um, Ave Ave. He's going for a trample, going, going for the War Chant at the very last second. In the old crown stance, they don't take too much damage. They are gonna try to clamp, clamp against this mill. He's wasting too much time. He's, he needs to retarget this, but it looks like he's not gonna be safe. He's not gonna be. <laughs> I can't even talk. Oh, but maybe. No, he's gonna lose it. He lost also this mill. He lost two mills at the beginning of the game. And during all this time, the Man of the West player is also creeping this war player. Let's see now the Skundabad warriors. It looks like they will be targeting this farm, but there is a builder who can buy some time by building a wall hub, you know? So two mills gone, and also Ave Havi, the Engma player, was using his war chant defensively, but the builder has been sniped down. Oh, that's a mistake from Smog. Imagine starting that great into the second game, killing two mills, creeping, but then just not paying attention for a single second and losing the builder just like that. That's horrible, actually. That's really, really bad. But I believe... You know, he's still ahead, definitely, because he got money from the creep, he took down two mills, he was able to protect his own farms, which is very important. And now he's also going for the transition into the Gondonites. So all the good stuff for Smokey, but the trample is gonna hurt him now. He's not gonna lose the soldiers because they're using the shield wall formation and the whole crown stance, but he took a lot of damage. So he eventually has to build a well. This is not gonna work out, right? I believe he won't be able to destroy that because Gondor Knights are gonna be ar arriving on the field. Oh, it might be close. I'm, maybe he can take it because he's not reacting with the pikemen for whatever reason. I'm not sure. What is Smokey doing? That's so random. Like, he lost all of a sudden two farms now for what for no reason. He could have saved this farm, you know? He had to make a choice. But we can, you can chase down these units, they are fast. So he could be using this pikeman to body block against this um, Gundabad warriors and actually try to save the farm, this farm instead, you know? So he couldn't save them both, which is kinda unfortunate. Smokey is going for a counter attack, but that's the power of the wolf packs, right? Did they also purchase the heavy spike colors? No. Without this upgrade, they are very vulnerable. You wanna always make sure to buy this upgrade, which only costs you 150, but you can make them really tanky. Oh, oh, oh but he's paying off the builder now from, from Ave Havi is gonna get sniped down. The builders nowadays, they are being the target from the others. Like, both players are using the builder in about 30 seconds. That's bad. That's bad. Now they have only one builder each. Each At some point of the game, they will have to eventually build another builder for 500 resources. But again, losing a builder is gonna slow you down, you know? It's gonna slow you down. Alright, no protection, Gondonites are not gonna be out in time, that's why Smokey has to demolish this to get some money back and also to deny his opponent some experience and power points. Gondonites, they have to be careful, they are level 1 only and they're gonna be able to get away, the Wolf Riders have to be careful too, but the Trailmaster should be able to survive, that's gonna be close. But that's the good thing about the Trailmaster units, even with level 1 they would be respawning over time. So Smokey has now one Gondonite here. With only two units from the battalion, right? So he has to now build a well. Because this is only a level 1 unit. Otherwise, this unit is gonna be absolutely useless. He has to build a well. But again, this is easier said than done. Because he has only one builder, right? He lost the second builder. So he has to expand. He has to build some farms. He has to build a well. He has a lot of stuff to be done with. But he has only one builder. So... Uh, there is a wall hub protecting this mill, going for the second mill now. He has to build another mill here, potentially, getting some more wolf riders on the field. Not enough pikemen on the field from Smokey, as he has to also replace the farms he's losing left and right. Uh, some of the units are around this area. Rallying Call is available, Heal is available for the Man of the West player too. Felvin and Warchan are on cooldown from the Engma player. I believe he was using it defensively around this side. That's gonna give now Smokey advantage with the buff. Let's see how much damage he will be able to deal. If he can actually group now with the units here, with the Gondor Knight, but if he... Oh, that's a heavy spike collar upgrade now on these units. And he's catching them off guard. Oh, that's very nice here from Ave Heavy. Nice reaction. 
You can see the wolf packs are now all of a sudden way, way tankier. They don't talk, they don't take too much damage. And the attack got defended just like that. Quite easily. <clears throat> without any counter damage to this mill. Alright, Smoky is creeping this Vork layer now at the right side, getting some money at least. Looks like he was also giving the last hit to the to the Gondonite level tomb. That's very smart. I like this idea from Smoky. This way, this is gonna respawn over time, even if it's only level one. He has to now build some defense to this farm because look at this. That is another farm homeless, kind of protect you know protectless pro without any protection. But I believe Ave Have was not able to see it. Remember, rallying call is available, but using it here, I believe, is gonna be a horrible idea. Get away there! Get away there! Oh, good! Don't lose your Gondonite. Don't tell me he's gonna be able to save him for now. Clamping against the farm. What is the vision control from Engma? Okay, he's only able to see this level two farm, right? Looking for farms here, but he won't find any farms. He will be able to find this farm now, which is only level one. Has also no protection. That is the builder coming from Smoky. He knows he needs him. Did he also lose the second builder? No, he didn't. Okay, I was like for a second worried that he has lost both the builders. No, no, no. But now he has two builders again on the field. But also, again, 500 resources wasted just like that. Oh, bad trample here from Ave Have. But he's luckily gonna, <laughs> gonna be able to save this Wolf Riders. Very lucky there. From the Turkish player. Not lose them. Okay, three power points collected for Smok after heal and rallying call, which is available now on this corner night. So they are buffed from the rallying call. You're gonna commit against this mill, surrounding it very nicely, I like that. This mill is going down for sure. And he was also using the buff on these units, but Felwind is gonna be used to suck them in, to disable them for multiple seconds. But I believe that's not gonna change the result, that this mill is gonna be still... Oh, nice micro here from Ave Have. the trample is gonna happen, but Smoky has to be careful. He has to kill this mill, I don't know why he's not killing this mill. Come the nice, you need to be careful, there are some pikemen, they need to avoid fighting. Beautiful trample just in time, and yes, Ave Have will be able to keep this mill protected. But he was using Warchan defensively as well as the Felwind. Another group of units moving now to this mill right there from Smoky. Five power points collected from Ave Have. That means, in the worst case scenario, he can always go also for the Snowbind to save one of the buildings, you know? As Ave is going for a counter attack. There's a statue coming up for Smoky, for defense, for leadership. And Engma has no way of nullifying leadership right now. Okay, I mean, for now, it looks like Ave Have doesn't want to take a fight, which makes sense, because it's hard to fight here in a spot like this. Archer range finally on the field for the player from Ukraine, for some defense, and he will need that. Like, I believe you need some defense like archers or rangers to deal with this wolf packs. Because look at this, Ave Have has many of these units on the field, right? He's now moving from a, from the top left side with a big army. This farm is gonna be the target, he's gonna be able to burst it down. That's why Smoky has to demolish that just in time. Smoky is down now to what? 535 command points, but he's actually ahead in terms of uh, command points at least. In compared to the Engma player, Ave Have. His command points caps now. He has to build some mills. He might go for the White Summon or for the for the Orc Summon. Orc Summon would lead to the Giants later on from the 15, and White Summon could lead for the Blight, for example, you know? And Blight can be not bad against some against an army like this. Because look at this. The army from Smoky is like almost based exclusively on infantry units. So with that being said, Blight and Felwind combination can actually mess this army up big time. On the other side, he has almost 8 power points collected, the Man of the West play at the bottom side. He's gonna potentially lose this farm. He's, you know, like, look at the micro, I like this. He's microing around, always cramping to make sure that he can deal the maximum amount of damage. And Smoke is going for a counter attack. Rallying Call is available, he has 9 power points collected. During this fight, he might get 10 power points, which can be invested into the Tower Summon, for example, but he might also go for Tom Bombadil, right? No, he can't, right? I believe you need Rebuild for that, I'm not sure. Almost 10 power points. Delvin and Warchan are available now, that's gonna be a massive fight in the front side of the Fortress of Engma. Warchan is gonna be used first, Rallying Call is still available, Smokey is not using it just yet. Delvin! 
Hobbit ally. He was waiting for the Hobbit allies. Invite someone at the same time. That's gonna be a big rallying call now. Okay, let's keep. Oh my goodness. Fiesta. Fiesta. <laughs> but it looks like Smoke is kind of winning this fight, but he's not gonna be able to deal too much. Oh, that's a nice trample. I like that. Wow, that's a nice trample also from Ave Ave. Sam West Kamji. Going now with the wolf packs for harassment, I like that. I like that Ave Ave is not gonna only defend himself, you know, he's always putting some counter pressure. There is a level 3 mill, by the way. If he can take down this mill, that's gonna hurt Ave big time. Does he even see it? No, he doesn't see it just yet. He will get to see it now with his vision. He's gonna com commit, guys, but. No, he has no snowbind. Oh, he's not gonna commit against it, okay? He's gonna run away now. He was not standing there, I believe he was just waiting for the Hobbit allies, you know? Because he was almost there. Like, he had like 9.7 power points collected. But was not quite there for the Hobbit allies. That's why he was waiting, I believe, uh, to get the power points he needs for the Hobbit allies summon, you know? To use the rallying call together. Theoden King will rise to war, and you know what time it is, when we see Theoden on the field, guys, we always have to go for it. Theoden King arrives on the battlefield. To support the army of men to victory. The farm is gonna be taken down. 560 command points available for the man of the West player. 650 for the Engma. But you can see this game is back and forth all the time. This game isn't decided just yet. All of the Kingsmen are still only level 1. He's finally going for the level 3. Bogondo, for men. I mean, he's gonna get some ranges on the fields very soon, guys, from the level 3. The thing is that Smokey has also, oh, never mind, he has also a level 3 farm, just like uh, Ave Havi, the level 3 mill. But he has no rangers, right? No, he has no rangers, just yet. He has only normal arches on the field, right? Yeah. But he has a level 2 archer range. I mean, if this dude, guys, chat, chat, listen to me. If this guy gets level 6, that's gonna be dangerous. Okay, leadership against no leadership. There's no Volda, right? No, that's gonna be... Oh, Theodin! Theodin oh, never mind. Theodin is actually not sucked in. Beautiful trample. Felvin is so nice, dude. Come on. You cannot tell me that Felvin isn't the best 5 power points from spell from the spellbook. I mean, when we don't, when we consider that that's only available for Engma, unlike Warchan or Riding Call, which is available for every faction, Calvin is definitely the best. Calvin is so nice. Now, the amount of Wombo combo potential you have with the Calvin of Engma is just insane. Nice fight here from Avi with the Calvin. I like it so much. He did so much work. The thing is. Uh, Smokey doesn't have too many pikemen, and the pikemen he oh, but there is there comes Forgonzo, guys. Look at this, Boromir, the creator of Forgonzo. Gildan is uh, retreating. He's almost level five. That's gonna become scary because he's all about to hit level five, level six. It's gonna be the time for the King of Rohan to shine bright like a diamond. Not alone, by the way. He's gonna shine together with the Gondor Knights and Rohirrim. I mean, look at the stats. Three. 100% armor and 100% damage, which is a spell that always stacks. And even with the leadership of the Theodian himself. Engma, no fear resistant, ladies and gentlemen. Well, level 5 units I see in between the units. There we go, level 5. Is this. Who is this level 5? It's an extra battalion. Boromir, once he's level 2, gonna be nice because the only, the only way for Engma to get all this here. To get fear resistant is from Karsh. So you need to get Karsh. Horn of Kondo. That's what I'm talking about. The ranges are hitting like a truck. 
from a long range and Boromir is so underrated. I would like to see him more and more often. That's a long shot. Booyah! And the rings are not able to move now. They are taking so much damage. Theoden is gonna write them down as he's level 5. And he's getting so much experience from this fight as well. The ranges are gone just like that. And Man of the West is striking back like... <laughs> this is unbelievable. Unbelievable. <clears throat> Those prices are too expensive. But, it, I, you know, I had them cheaper at some point of the of the stream of the Twitch. Then it was just spammed all the time, you know? I don't want them to be spammed. I, don't, I want them to be something special. You know what I'm saying? We need cards with fear resistance. Otherwise, this Horn of Conde is gonna be always very effective. You know, if you don't have fear resistance. Yeah, it will crush us. Let's see if they. Oh, the Blight! But Felvin? Is Felvin ability available? No, it's not available. But it's still gonna work out very nicely for Engma. Blight was used. I like that. Where is Boromir when we need him? Boromir is gonna also die potentially. He's very slow. Looks like he's gonna get away for now. The Felvin to catch those Condonites. Look at the army of the Whites. <laughs> Fight for me and I will hold your oaths for fulfilled. That's the army of the Whites this time. You know what I'm saying? Like this is... Okay, they're gonna, he's gonna save the Condonites. But they're gonna be gone very soon, right? They don't have too much time on the Middle Earth. They are ghosts. They need to go to the, to the ghost realm. After dying. Uh, Theoden is almost level 6, like a little, bit, a little bit more than half a level needed for that. That's gonna be a huge power spike for Men of the West. Captain of Conde is almost level 3, level 5 is gonna unlock his leadership. Uh, let's take a look PowerPoint wise. Mrs. Mock has 16 power points collected after the Hobbit allies. He has 810 command points available, that's a lot. But he's gonna lose now this farm, there is no way he can save this. On the other side we have 9 power points almost collected for Engma. After the Blight. So he can now save for the 25, right? Uh, and he's only, what, 16 power points away from this point. And he has 750 command points available. So Theodin getting closer. Marketplace is coming up now for Mr. Smog for some more money. As he's building up the second barracks. The stable is gonna get also upgraded to level 2. I like that. I like to see Rohirrim, you know? Because Glorious Charge is still the best when you are using it on Rohirrim. That's what I feel like. Oh, Engma is moving. That's a big army, guys. But keep in mind that Felvind is on cooldown. Kung Fu Duck, thank you so much for the Prime Sub. Thank you for the support, man. Appreciate that so much. Thank you. Kung Fu Duck One just subscribed. Welcome to Beyond Standards Crew. Means really a lot to me, man. Thank you. That's a big Engma army, but Felvin is on cooldown and Blight is also on cooldown. However, I feel like White, if he can wait for the Felvin cooldown, ranges are level 1 only, right? I mean, just buy this one. Buy the Benakiri upgrade. That's so efficient for Engma. And you have 4 rangers. You're gonna get them all level 2. That means you have 4 long shots. Would be awesome. Think about it. Four long shots, Felvind makes it undodgeable, so you cannot dodge the incoming damage. You can one shot everything, you know? On Bombardier, it's gonna be the choice. It's another 10 power point spell from Mr. Smoky. Oh, boo! Sit down! Oh, that was a beautiful, juicy, and sexy. Sonic song from the sexy Tom Bombadil. Look this beard, he's looking... I, you know, I didn't even realize that he's so good looking, but after the Sonic song, holy moly, this guy is looking good! I bet also he's smelling good. Okay, the mill has been taken down, and look at this, he killed so much from Engma. What a timing, what a great and juicy Sonic song. The mill is going down, rallying call is... Oh, that's a Felvin into the Blight Summon? Okay, I mean, what is happening right now? Waldo is also engaging. Oh, that's a beautiful trap. What is happening? They are not able to touch to to touch each other, dude, because they are you know they are defending each other all. I mean, they are defending themselves all the time. This meal level almost two is gonna be taken down. But look, the power points from the man of the west player. He has the power points now for the ranger summon, which I don't like to see that much. The thing is, they don't have uh, they have long shots, but they have no fire, you know? They have no damage against buildings, right? 
But they have long shot. Where is Borom even? We need him. That's a long shot incoming now. He has to dodge. Nice reaction here from Smokey. I like that. Snow trolls charging behind the enemy lines. You don't get any experience. I was talking about that before. When you when you kill summon units, you don't get anything. That's a waste of ranger summon, kinda. He's gonna go for a long shot summon. Boromir was stunning, but it's on cooldown. Look at the ranger. He did achieve almost nothing with them, right? The snow trolls just running around and killing everybody. I like to see that. I like to see that. But man of the best play. Look his money. He has 3,000. 935 command points. Baldo hits level 5, unlocks the summon hill man, and Boromir is running for his life. And what a great defense from the Engma player once again, and what a waste of the Dunedan Elias summon from the Man of the West player, Mr. Smok. You have 16 power points collected for Ave Havi. Chad, that means he's only 9 power points away from getting his 25, okay? But he's down to 550 command points only. While Smokey has almost full command points available. And he is going for a big boy. We already know who that is. It's gonna be Aragon, Araton's son, guys. <clears throat> he had 3000, so I'm assuming that's... Or maybe Gandalf. Because keep in mind, Gandalf got buff dispatch too. Normally Gandalf costs 3000 and uh, 4000. Now he costs only 3700. And look at this. Look at this. We have Karsh on the field, the white hero. He's so squishy though. He's gonna potentially die in a second against Rangers, right? But the chill soul is actually quite nice. I mean, it kind of makes sense that he's squishy. Imagine him being tanky. Like, this would kill them in long term. Chill soul, you know? Okay, so we have Boromir here. Theoden here. And ladies and gentlemen. Glorious charge is available. I don't know if any of you guys have 10,000 points. Because that's going to be an expensive one. But you know what you need to do in the chat. Nor is he early. He arrives precisely when he means. Hey Legolas, welcome to the stream. But you guys know what to do if this guy ever gets to use his glorious charge. He has only one Gondor Knight. Oh, that is Gandalf. Holy moly. The grey guy. I mean, it's an orange guy now because of the color. With the orange cloak. Gandalf the grey. Sporting the soldiers. I mean, this is gonna be... That's a nice game, dude. I like this. I like this. Okay, the mill is going down. It's a level 2 mill. Yes, level 3 buildings. They're gonna shoot, by the way. Full command points available. Long shot is incoming. Fiesta is happening. Rallying call is gonna be used. We're gonna take a look into that. What happened here? Or well, long shot was happening here, I guess. With the rangers. And Felvin combination, I'm assuming, right? Felvin, yeah. Felvin's long shot. Where is... Oh, oh. Oh, oh. Oh, oh. Chad, you know what's happening. Go it. Do it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Bombo combo, baby! Sit down, okay? Horn of Kondo, Bizarre Blast. That's how easy it can become. And we see Lightning Sword, and we see GG against the mighty Gandalf. There is no chance of victory. Game over after a juicy, beautiful Sonic song. On the left side, we have the orange elven player Mr. Smok against the red goblin player Ave Havi on the right side. Um, is betting banned in Turkey? I, I, <coughs> sorry. <coughs> yeah, I think it's banned in Turkey. Um, many, many people were telling me that it's not possible to bet. So we, we see two tunnels coming up for the goblin player Ave Havi. And two Malone trees into the barracks coming up for Mr. Smoke on the left side. Westfold? Oh, what is this? This map is... Do, do you see what happens when I zoom out on this map? Why? What? <laughs> this is kind of funny. On every other map it works, but in this one it doesn't work. Use VPN. Yeah, I believe VPN is a great choice, right? To um, use not only for this, but also for watching some YouTube videos. Because I, I feel like in some countries, some YouTube videos are, for example, not allowed to watch. Spider Pit start of the two tunnels. Into the third tunnel at the bottom right side. On the other side, uh, we're going to have a Lorian Warrior start. From Smokey on the left. I'm actually curious because um, I want to know who's going to be able to win the 1v1 situation between Spider Lynx and Glorian Warriors. I'm not sure about that. 
I would say, I mean, Spider Links, they should be basically winning this fight, right? I mean, let's see. We're gonna see that. We're gonna find out, I'm assuming. And also, the change to the Alvin faction in this one is, if you if you miss this, uh, your Lorian warriors are getting stealthed. Uh, are not getting stealthed anymore. Unlike in the 8.4. So when you, are, when you are putting them, for example, next to the trees, the Alvin units would get stealthed. But this is not gonna be possible anymore. So that only counts on the archers. Can, you know, you can still make your archers get stealthed, but doesn't work on the pikemen, and doesn't work on the Lorian warriors either. Smokey is playing actually defensively. He's looking for some potential uh, tunnels here, but he won't find any because Ave Havi is creeping this uh, work layer at the bottom right side first with the spiderlings, and I like this a lot because this way those spiderlings are gonna hit level two. Goblin cave coming up next. Where uh, is the Builder. I mean, he has a builder here. And a builder. No, he has a builder here. And where is the second? There is the second builder. Okay, he's not expanding offensively, though. We can hide there. Which is something interesting. Okay. He's gonna try to creep this, but he's taking damage now. Trying to creep this one, of course. No, he didn't take any damage. Now we're gonna see a 1v1 situation between Lorian Warriors and Sp Spider Links. We shall see. Hold ground stands. Hold ground stands. But you see that one of the Spider Links is not able to attack. And actually, two of them are not attacking. Two of them are attacking the work layer still. And also, same here from the Lorian Warriors. It feels like Lorian Warriors are gonna be... It's gonna be an even fight, kinda, right? But they're gonna hit level 2 now. Okay, that's gonna make the make the fight uneven now. And the Spiderlings are gonna be able to win. Not only that, but he's gonna also get this creep now, which is, a, you know, a lot. Like, he gets two creeps, like, two creeps against zero. Smokey is trying to creep this trolley in the middle of the map. And Spiderlings are moving to the through the bottom side for harassment. They're gonna target this Madon tree now. Level 2. Level 2. And the builder has to be careful. He's paying attention. He's gonna be able to get in safety. And the Malone tree is gonna be taken down. But he has to be careful. Spiderlings are... Oh, nice bombard. Do you see that? That's a bombard ability. This way you can shoot over the buildings too. You can shoot like this, you know? Can't even show. I like the bombard. Many few people are using it. I don't see many people using it anymore. The bombard ability from the archers, you know, this one. So they automatically shoot at the given place. That's something which doesn't exist in BFME One, for example. It only exists on the siege weapons like catapults, trebuchets, or ballistas. Okay, the first counter attack. Uh oh, they need to be protected by the pikemen. Or that they're not gonna... Be... He's gonna try now. He's gonna try to clamp against the tunnel. And he will be able to take it down. But he's gonna lose all the units here. The rubble is also going down. Nice one here from Smokey. I like that. Looks like he's gonna creep the work layer at the bottom left side at the same time. We have not many creeps left on the map anymore. Actually, this is the only creep left, right? Yeah, that's the only creep left after the first 3 to 5 minutes into the game. On the map Westfold. And Spider Pits level 1. Goblin Caves level 1, two of them. On the other side we see Barracks and a stable for the Lancers. And he has indeed now already two Lancers on the field. But uh, they need to be kind of careful against the Spiderlings. That's a mad builder is getting in safety just in time. Tunnel is coming up. Oh, but he needs to be careful against the Spiderlings like mentioned before. Riding Cole is going to be used defensively. He needs to now go for a trample as soon as possible. But the Malone tree is getting bursted down in a single second. Now he's going to clump against this Malone tree right after. And he has many, many spider links. But he's losing a lot from them also. Right? He's losing a lot. But they are, like, they are fast, you know? They are fast. They can always... Oh, it was really close. It was really, really close. Chasing them is pointless, because they are faster, right? Okay. Yulda from Ave Habe might be in trouble after... Uh, the goblins are gonna die to the to the Lancers. He's, he needs to move now with the Builder. Oh, he's pay oh, 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 oh. He's gonna die eventually, right? No! Oh, yeah. He's dying very fast, actually, to archers. Holy moly. A lot of damage. So he was able to save one of the spider links, right? Only one of them. 
The other one kinda died. But he has now some spider riders on the field. Uh, the cavalry units from the goblin faction. And they should be also doing nice against the lancers. It's a mistake. Don't chase now, I believe, right? With the, with the spider links, it would be a mistake. He's badly damaged. He can always turn around and fight. And... Uh, wait a second. So we have 550 command points available for goblins and 625 for elves. The smoke is actually kind of leading right now. But... Oh, never mind. Here's some pikemen for defense. One more spider rider. He's gonna use heal to get in safety. The goblin warriors, they need to kill this pikeman. And that's the power of, this, of the goblin spider riders. You know, you can always disengage, hit and run because you are not only mobile, but you are also... Like a like a archer and swordman at the same time. Smokey's gonna creep the uh, last creep on the map Westfold at the top left side. And the stable is level one. He's gonna go for a well now for the sustain. And also this barracks is only level one. But at some point of the game, eventually, he's gonna also get the barracks level two for the Mirkwoods. And from this point on, it's gonna be harder and harder for the goblins because the Mirkwoods are just so strong. Alright. Uh oh. Be careful. Use the bomb mod, maybe? I think if you use bomb mod, you can kill him, maybe, right? Uh, he was too late. Too late. Oh, that's nice damage with the poison arrows. I like that. By the way, this poison arrows from the spider riders got buffed against Mordor. Against mountain trolls, bell beast, witch king, you can deal now much more damage. Um, yeah, he has no fissure, so he has no after all swordsman, no heroes, and also not that many command points. Unlike Smokey, he has 650. Smokey is doing nice. There is a statue coming up for the Elven player for the protection of this pathway. He has some units also to keep those Malon trees alive and protected. The stable might be upgraded later on to level 2 for the horse archers, potentially. Builder has to be careful. Oh, 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 oh. It's gonna be the second builder Abe is losing. Oh, no. He lost like builder like two minutes ago as well. It's, he lost two builders this game, guys. He has to now invest 500, as you can see, right? It's a big commitment with cave pads and war chants. But it's a bad fight to take regardless. Maybe not. He's gonna go for a trample. Oh, but look at this. Look at this buff finding from these units. Do you see that? The wolf? What? He moved through this tiny pathway right there <laughs> to get in safety. I like that. Nice trample into the back line now with the spider riders, but I believe he has to disengage eventually. And during all this time, he's losing all the tunnels around this area. Oh, but he has a lot of goblins for defense now. Get even some hot bonuses going on. But you can see the goblins are dying very, very fast. And yeah, doesn't look great. Okay, the spider riders are doing a nice job. Um, and actually, he has nice, nice micro here from... Oh, be careful. Nice micro from Ave Have. Yep. Oh, that's, that's going to be a counter unit, right? That's a counter hero to the spider riders. Glorfindel himself from uh, Mr. Smog. And now he can always keep chasing them down all the time. And he's hitting very hard. You know, you know his flash damage, right? He's able to hit multiple units at the same time. <laughs> One hits, level two. Two hits, level two and a half. <laughs> he's so strong against those in those kind of situations. He's so reliable. This uh, mounted hero from the Elven faction. Almost level three. We have Azok now joining the fight from uh, Ave Have. Azok is not bad. I think he's most the most seen goblin hero in the game, definitely in the one we wants because he, you know, cost efficient, gives you money whenever you kill enemy units once he's level two. Okay, nice into the backline, beautiful trample. But one of the spider riders is actually quite slow and will be taken down. Did he use arrow volley? Yes, he did use arrow volley. Azok might be in trouble. That is Glorfindel. He's taking a lot of damage. Another attack. He's level 2 now, getting money plus 10 for killing these lances, by the way. Okay. 
running for his life. Can he get into the tunnel in time? I believe he can, right? He can. Can he? Can he? Oh, 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 what? Chase him, dude. Mr. Smoke is like, I will let you live this one time. <laughs> Look, Azok's HP. He's like, almost dead. Put him in, in, in the, <laughs> into a tunnel or something to not lose him. Okay. I mean, I believe Smokey has now a big advantage in this game. Uh, double Varag, stable. He has good map control. He has Glorfindel on the field now as a counter hero to the Spider Riders. They cannot achieve too much. Spider Allies needs to achieve something now. He's gonna be able to destroy potentially two Malone trees at the same time. This one has been taken down by the Spider Links. Okay, the Spider Riders are forced to disengage. It's a bad fight to take. Why would you fight against Pike Man? That's a horrible idea. Spiders are dying very fast against Pike Man, actually. Oh, he's not gonna be able to destroy this Malone tree, right? And he's also not gonna be able to destroy this Malone tree. Great defense from Smokey. But he's not paying attention now. Pay atten if he pays attention, he can defend this. But it looks like he's not paying attention and he won't be able to keep this Malone tree protected. Okay. Oh, nice one from Ave. Killing those Lancers. I like that. Glorfindel is, is using the Blade of Purity. Now he needs to disengage with the Spider Riders. The Smalone tree got protected. And Spider Links are taken down. The Smalone trees, two of them actually are quite slow. And Ave has 525 command points available. 8 power points collected after the Spider Allies, Keef Bats, and the War Chant. And Mr. Smoke on the other side has 685 command points available. And has 10 power points collected after the arrow volley, rallying call, and the heal from the spellbook. And also uh, level 3.5 for Glorfindel. Look at this poison arrow damage, I like that. But they are not getting stealthed anymore, the spike man, keep that in mind. In normal situation, they would be invis invisible here, but they are not anymore. They changed this. In this beta patch, at least. Pato Popularis just subscribed. Welcome to Beyond Standards Crew. Saddle up, Lancers. Uh, Pato Popularis, thank you so much for the for the sub to the channel, man. Appreciate that so much. Means a lot to me. Thanks for the support. We offer thank you, thank you, thank you. And, and Turkishi with the 50 BD bomb. Hello, everybody. Hello, Turkishi. Welcome. Thank you, Peter, once again. The Malone tree is going to be taken down. We have now finally some half troll pikemen on the field. And that's going to change a lot. Because this half troll pikemen, they are so nice against Glorfindel. Every, you know, whenever they get the chance to touch him, uh, you will be surprised about how fast he's getting bursted down. The thing is, they nerfed Glorfindel in this patch once again. So he has less HP. So taking him down is way, way easier. Even through his Blade of Purity. Okay. But he has to be careful. Don't fight against the half troll pike man. Look what's gonna happen if he if they touch him, but they are not attacking him for some reason. Attack him, dude! <laughs> Look, they are doing nothing! Oh, that's horrible. That I, I would get triggered if I would be Ave Ave here. Imagine right clicking him and he, they are not attacking for some reason. 15 power points collected for Smokey. That can be game-changing point because with the 15. He can go for the end summon and actually siege. And I think that's gonna be also his uh, his plan. End summon is ready. Cave pets are flying around. That's the Watcher! There we go! Beautiful Watcher! Now the end summon doesn't make any sense because he has nothing to keep this end alive. He's so lucky that the Watcher got summoned before he summoned the ends. Imagine him summoning ends and then he uses Watcher because it also works against ends. You can knock them back, you know? So it's, it's not bad for Smokey because he will have for the next fight uh, his Rallying Call, his Arrow Volley, and his End Summon ready, guys. Okay. I will change Elvin. Uh, it will change Elvin Ambush gameplay. I don't see the point of the change. I don't see the point in the change. I, I mean, I can understand the change that your pikemen are getting stealthed, you know? Not stealthed anymore because... 
I believe if you're playing like, for example, Man of the West and you're riding through the forest, you don't, you know, you're like, oh, nice, there is nothing happening, I can ride. And then you see, like, last second, Spike Man in the porcupine formation being invisible around the trees. That can be kind of triggering, but Lorian Warriors, I mean, you can, maybe you could leave them at least stealthed. Maybe. Palando, welcome. Ants can be knocked in BFME too. Yeah, they fly around. <laughs> when you summon Watcher underneath them, they fly around. They don't even knock, they fly like pew, pew, pew. They are becoming ant, ant astronauts or entronauts. Uh, Tanagus, welcome to the stream. Alright. Level almost 6, Azok, he's running for his life. Uh, you are saying get uh, Mirkwoods, but he has not the money. I mean, he has money actually. Yeah, you are right. I don't know why he's not going for the Mirkwoods. Maybe he's trying to win without. He's gonna kill so many spider riders now. Dude, look at this situation. They are running for their lives. Azuk is gonna be able to get away. That's a whole that's a lot of lancers, by the way. Is he gonna commit against the fortress? Oh yeah, he summoned the ants before. There we go. The ants are sieging. He's gonna commit fully, fully against the fortress. That is Arvin too. But I don't I don't think he can do it. Oh my god, he lost all the <laughs> he lost all the lancers and the ants are gone. That's the power of the goblin faction, right? Because the goblin expansions are building up extremely fast in compared to all the other factions. So he lost the end summon, he lost all the lancers as well. And the fortress is still remaining, and trust me, it's in a safe spot because this elven army is not gonna be able to kill this fortress. Trust me on that one, guys. Yes, barely any melee units, right? The Spike Man, they, well, they will die to the arrow towers very, very fast. Yeah, true. I didn't hear that, my bad. But great defense from Ave Havi, he's still in the game. Seven, 60 command points available now for Smokey. 850 command points available for Ave Havi. And he is going for a counter attack. Spider Lies, Goblins, he is attacking now the Fortress from the Elven player. But it's a mistake as well. I don't like this, as Eldron is joining the battlefield from the Fortress of the Elven player, Mr. Smog. Can he actually do it? I don't think he can, right? There is no way. There's no way you can... I mean, the best expansion, by the way, in a situation like this is the Flood expansion. Floodgate expansion can one-shot everything around this side. It just kills incredible, ridiculous amount of damage, guys. It, it's, it's like... Um, but that's a meme. That's like... That's like a lot of uh, potential wasted, which could be invested into killing those Malone trees instead, you know? Look, there is level 3 Malone tree in the front side. This is level 2. This is level 2. You could have killed at least one or two of them. Would be a better investment of war chant and your spider ally summon 11 power points collected for goblins and 14 power points collected for smoky he has almost 15 now and glorfindel is gonna hit level 6 after killing this but if this girl if this girl gets level 6 guys oh she didn't get any experience because she was not standing next to him you want to make sure that you are staying next to each other that should be the distance to share experience if this girl gets level 6 the flood is hallelujah. It deals so much damage. We have seen many, many times you are able to one shot a level 3 building, siege works, and you know, got, of course, resource building is no big problem, but you can even burst down like the fortress, for example. It would be enough to kill this fortress. More than enough. Elven, play, Elven gameplay, the fortress is healing up over time. Uh, he has statue behind well, so it's hard for the goblins to commit against that. Builder has been sniped down though. That's very very nice. I like that. And they are just using, uh, he, I mean, Mr. Smoke is just using the Alvin heroes to kill the tunnels left and right. Pretty much. The thing is, Abi Habe has to be careful because if he doesn't demolish the buildings in time, and if Arvin gets level six, it's just very strong. And the 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 funny part about Arvin is, and Mustafa is one of the players who likes Arvin, and I believe. I've not seen anyone else but Mustafa spamming Arvin every single game. And I like the way Mustafa is playing with Arvin too. Because he's always pressuring. She's she's she costs 1000, dude. She's not expensive, you know. So she's always pressuring with Arvin. Tries to get her level 6. But the one thing I can advise you guys to do is use flat and then suicide. Like just let her let your opponent kill her, you know? Because the flat has such a long cooldown that the time. You need to revive her, it's like much, 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 much faster. So if you lose her and revive her, she's gonna be way faster on the field than the flood would be ready. And if she dies and comes back, she will have always flood back up. 
It's a pretty pretty good strategy. Use flat die, use flat die, use flat die. Took the power points from Smaki. Yes, so much. 17 power points too for Ave Have. And uh, flat and dra summon dragon. I don't I don't think you can go for summon dragon. Maybe you can go for the battle. I'm not sure. We shall see what they're gonna what they're gonna choose. I mean flat is gonna be the best choice. I think flat is just one of the best uh, summons. I mean usage of the power points from this from the spell book alongside with the summon dragon. However, the flat has no counterplay. So if you use flat here, imagine this. Imagine look at this layout of goblins. Do you see that? Building, 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 building. So use flats here. You one shot everything, right? Just like that. There is no counterplay. And also Sunflare could be nice, but I don't think Sunflare deals so much damage as Flat. I feel like Flat deals more damage, but I'm not sure. We shall see. But Ave Havi is down, guys. He's down to 450 command points only. Like he has no units, no army, no money. And Mr. Smok has like 660, a lot of money, almost 25 power points, and the army now moving from the top side. There are two level 3 tunnels that are actually keeping uh, the goblin player alive. And he's gonna go for the sun flare. Okay. Sun flare against the fortress. He wanna kill the fortress. But I don't know about this. I mean, he's gonna kill the expansions eventually, right? So put water. Where is the where is the builder? <laughs> oh, put, put water on. What is this? What is this play? What is this use? This is useless. Dude. This ability is literally useless. This is the worst 25 power point I've ever seen in my life. What is this? This fortress lost like 0.5% of the of the HP. And he couldn't even kill the tower expansion with the sunflake. Can you imagine that? What? <laughs> this is what is this? Imagine you save 25. <laughs> fight, 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 25. You use sunflare and you don't even one shot the battle tower? Around the fortress? Is this a joke? I hope not. Because it would be a bad joke. The build is gonna go down. Oh, Ave Ave is down, so. There is no way. <laughs> but, I mean, I feel like flat is good against anything, right? When you use flat against units, you also one shot them, right? Yeah, I mean, Sunflare is good against heroes, too. But it's horrible in this case against buildings. It's horrible. Like, I mean, I can understand that it doesn't deal as much damage as others. But that you not even can one-shot the battle tower. Which has 1000 HP. This structure has 1000 HP, guys. I mean, you can one-shot heroes and stuff. That kind of makes sense, I guess. But this felt really, really weak to me. Uh, too late to bet on Mr. Smog here? I guess so, man, Marker. Sorry for that. <laughs> Sunflare has decent damage versus structures. You mean versus structures beside the fortress, right? <laughs> but I was really... I mean, I didn't expect that, to be honest with you. I was expecting the fortress to go down. Or at least the expansion to go down. But, uh... Oh, boy! That's something different! I think he can destroy the fortress. I think he can do it. Imagine, imagine if Ave Ave can turn this game around. I don't think if he can, but I, I'm not sure either. Oh my god, the summons are dealing zero damage to buildings. Don't even try, bro. Like, he doesn't kill it, right? Arvin is here. Pew! <laughs> oh, lol. They are flying literally to the next map. <laughs> but they are not dying either, so they have... They are, actually, I was expecting Arvin to get one-shotted, but she's kind of tankier than I was expecting it to be. This Spider Rider should also come in. There are some Mirkwoods on the field, finally. Spider Riders are also around this area. He was using heal. Breath fire. Can he do it? He's trying hard, but I don't think he, it's, it's going to be enough, right? Look how much damage these units and heroes are dealing. Oh 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 the thing is Silverton Arrow Upgrade is a is a monster destroyer. Like I have seen that many many times in which the summon dragon, for example, you know from, from goblins or from Isengard, is getting one shotted, almost one shotted. Oh, that's, that's a commitment now, the Watcher. And he's saying, haha, GG. He knows there is no way of victory. The Balrog is gone. And uh, the game 
I mean, Ave was leading 1-0 now. Smokey was able to win two games in a row. The score is now 2-1 for Mr. Smok. Okay, guys. So, we have on the right side the red Alvin player Ave Harvey against the orange motor player Mr. Smok on the left side. This is the map Mering Stream, one of the one of the maps we have taken from BFME2 and using it for Rise of the Witch King. Hey, Era, welcome. Nice to see you here, man. What happened in the stream? Uh, Era, we started the, the stream with the with the matches between Irby and uh, Fairy. Remember, it was 2-2 and then Fairy had to go, so we could we were, we were forced to delay it. We could be finishing them today. And now, after the series between those two players, we are having the, we are having the matches between Ave Ave and Mr. Smog. Two slaughterhouses into the Haradrim Palace start. No arc pit this time. Interesting. On the other side, we see two Malone trees into the Varax, into the third Malone tree coming up from the Alvin player on the right side. Uh, RT Vinu, thanks for the follow, appreciate that. Hey, B12 Gaming. I see you are cheering for Mr. Smog. I'm assuming you are betting on him with your points. And Ixi Born, thanks for the follow as well. And welcome to the stream. Uh, we are having now some uh, Champions League games, actually, for Rise of the Witch King, guys. It's like a, like a competitive scene with 10 players included in the list. Uh, top players of, of Rise of the Witch King fighting in the beta. And Bagu Gaming, thanks for the follow as well. And Ballsteep, thanks for the follow as well. Uh, Shanks, for how many hours will you stream? I'm not sure. I mean, depends. Uh, this is gonna be the last series potentially. Depends when this is gonna end. So it's it's now two one again. This is gonna end once one of the players is gonna have four wins. It might be ending in what two games. It might last four more games. Who knows? And then depends also, of course, how many how many minutes the games are lasting. Uh, the Foxes eleven. Thanks for the follow as well. Lorraine Warriors are moving forward. And we have Lancer start. Unlucky for Mr. Smog because he was not able to see the Lorraine Warriors coming. Hey, Shanks, where are you from? I am actually living in Germany, but I was born and raised in Turkey. Some Turkish guy, but I'm living in Germany since many, many years. And also Lancer start. I mean, stable upcoming for uh, Ave Havi on the right. You will be able to clump against this Malone tree and potentially be able to take it down. Oh, Rallying Call is going to be used offensively from Ave Havi. That's going to force Smokey to demolish this slaughterhouse immediately. South Africa. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm not from South Africa. The Malone tree is going to be taken down. Great Fairy won, but he is still fifth. No, he's not fifth. The list is just not updated yet. I need to update this list after this stream. It's not like it's auto uh, updating automatically. I need to do it manually, you know? Living in Germany while wow, I am in, U in the US? Oh, nice. Where are you from US? I mean, US is such a big thing, right? So, like, you have, like, different time zones, time zones in, the, in the country. I want to be one time in my life, I want to visit US, guys. Really. I was never there. I wanted to go to Florida and uh, New York, too. With my wife, but then the pandemic happened and we couldn't last year. But hopefully, we will manage to be there one time. I would love to see US. How can someone send a change proposals to the people making the new patches? Um, I think Irby, uh, Talos, Mr. Smoke are in the patch team, so you can DM them. Send them a private message to either one of these players. What a beautiful map. It's from BFME2, yeah. I live in Florida. I will buy Shanks a beer. Dude, I'm gonna call you when I'm in Florida. Promise. We're gonna meet each other. We're gonna go on the beach. Why can you speak so good English? My Turkish friends from Germany can speak it. I mean, I don't know. I don't think it's very good what I can speak in English, but you know, the answer is learning by doing. Just speak it, make some mistakes, improve it, make some mistakes, improve it. But don't be afraid of doing it because you might make a mistake. Because I'm a person, I feel like you learn the most of in your life from making mistakes. I'm not avoiding making mistakes. I'm happy 
because I feel like I can learn something about it, uh, you know, of that. Corsars are getting trampled down from the Lancers. And the Corsars, that's a lot of money invested, you know, they cost 350 each, guys, so he lost like 700 just like that. Creep secured by Mr. Smog on the top left side with the Easter Lynx and Oryx. And Abe Javi is looking to pressure with the Lancers. Let's take a look into the current command points and power points. Abe Javi has 350 command points only. That means he has this three Malone trees. That's it. On the other side, we see 400 command points for Mr. Smog. He has three power points collected, while Abe Javi has the same amount of power points collected as well. It's a nice army right there with, East, uh, with uh, pikemen and archers and lancers. And Smog might lose a lot here actually. But he's going for a counter attack, which makes. Which is kind of interesting. He will be kind of struggling a lot in order to defend himself. Cheng's best English word is fiesta. Of course. Fiesta. It's the best word. Okay. Rallying call has been used. Let's see. Malon tree is gonna go down. Is Warchan ability available? No, I is available for the Mordor, of course. Um, the build is getting in safety. But the thing is that Ave Have has no units to defend himself. That means this Malon tree is gonna be taken down next. It looks like he's retreating, guys. Um, which might be not even a bad idea. Because he's gonna use the Lancers for harassment. And he's gonna use his infantry units for defense. This Malone tree has been taken down. Let's see if Smokey can reach this Malone tree in the backside where the stable is at. We have one more lens of Italian joining, but there are some Easter links he has to avoid fighting. I mean, he has no Corsairs. He stopped making Corsairs. I would like to see more Corsairs. I like Corsairs when you have them inside the army, you know? Not when you send them out one by one. The Malone tree has been demolished by Ave Havi. Eye is active. Nice one going around to avoid damage. We might even take, take down this Malone tree in the front side. Lancers are gonna be sent forward once again. Scouting the area, finding some potential uh, slaughter slaughterhouses. You might be able to see this one and that's gonna be also the case. Let's see. Smokey is committing now against the Malone tree. Against the, one of the last remaining Malone trees actually from the Alvin player, guys. Indeed. He's gonna drop down. If he loses that to 325 command points only. His command points kept already. And it looks like he's gonna lose this. 300 command points now. But he has this two Malone trees, that's it. Smokey has 525 command points with Mordor. He's actually doing pretty, pretty good in this one. Wunderbar sounds pretty better than Fiesta. But Wunderbar. <laughs> I mean, Fiesta doesn't need to sound good. It just feels good. Hey, Beastie, my friend! Beastie. Guys, I need to tell you about Beastie. We know, me and Beastie know each other from BFME 1 for like many, many, many years. And he is the first person I met in online game BFME that I was also able to meet in real life. You know? And I was in Holland. And then we, he took me to McDonald's and we were eating stuff together. <laughs> All right, so we have 525 command points available, 450 command points available for the Elven player. He almost lost the barracks too. The stable is level one still, and I believe Ave Havi now for the next couple of minutes has to play a little bit more defensively. Yeah, yeah, we, we, we you know I was at his place. We played games when I was at his place in Holland. Uh, then we went to McDonald's, eat something, Big Mac stuff like this, and I was. <laughs> <laughs> oh nice damage dealt but I like the way that Smokey is always putting pressure you know this is what I like to see like you don't want to defend yourself all the time Smokey has always some defense but he's at the very same time putting pressure with his units it's so nice Bromance of course oh nice one this is gonna be a nice the Malone tree is going to be taken down. Very good, very good, very good. On the other side, we see... Uh, yeah, Ave Ave has to rotate all the time. The thing is, he has not enough units to split them, you know, unlike Mr. Smog. That's why he has... This is his entire infantry army. He has some Lancers, but that's it. 
<clears throat> and he cannot afford this army to be split. That's why he has to stay grouped, but he wants to put pressure. However, every time he moves forward, Smokey is punishing him by going for a counterattack. So, yeah, Smokey is doing a nice job in this game. Online games too. We played BFME games. We played League of Legends. Too strong for you. I cannot help you if you have this uh, intense uh, thinking. <laughs> In Czech, I was also in Czech Republic. I was in Prague last year, I believe it was, with my cousin. And it's very true. In Czech Republic, the beer is so cheap, guys. You cannot believe it. It tastes so good as well. Like, did you know, for example, that at least in European countries, almost all the beer you are drinking is actually coming from Czech Republic? And even the Turkish beer, for example, when you drink in Turkey, in Turkey like FS Pilsen, for example, right? This is literally from Czech Republic. There is like a city which is called Pilsen. Big Warchant play on the Malone Tree. Commitment. <clears throat> Bad Trample. Jenks, you play League of Legends? Yeah, I play sometimes League of Legends, but this game, I gotta be honest, is triggering me. Uh, which faction has the best hero unit, do you think? When we talk about cost efficiency, it, it is Isengard's Lords. When you think about a hero which you can recruit for not too much money, and will give you everything you need from the early until the very late game, it has to be Lords. Uh, when you are thinking about like a power level, a hero that can carry the game, uh, any hero pretty much with level 10. Like Gandalf with Ford of Power, uh, Saruman is pretty strong lead game, of course. Uh, Gorkil the Goblin King with the Fire Drakes, I mean a lot of stuff can be very very strong. But I believe saying like this is the strongest hero is a mistake because it depends in so many situations, you know, what you want to do with this hero. You want to destroy units? Ford of Power is your thing. You want to destroy buildings? Gloin is your thing. You want to control the enemy units and have impact on the battle, Saruman is your thing, you know? There are so many variations in which the hero can be more or less impactful. So saying the best is kind of hard. Um, do you think Lurz is better than Mouth of Sauron? Yes. Definitely. I mean, I don't, I'm not saying Mouth of Sauron is bad. He's also a great hero, but Lurz is definitely ahead. Lourdes has Carnage, which makes him already a one better 1v1 uh, hero than Mouth of Sauron has. Yes. You can fight with bow and sword. You can have leadership. You have pillage, which makes you get money. And you have the anti-hero ability, which cripples down the most important hero from the enemy player. Disables him for like 25 to 30 seconds. He can literally not move. And most of the heroes you can take care about with your own Lourdes by using the Carnage from your sword with level 2. 200% damage boost. The Lord is definitely the go-to hero in all BFME games, also in BFME 1. He's so cost-efficient, brings so much to the table. Mordi is dominating this game, by the way. If, uh, th that's the Mouth of Sauron you was talking about? There he is. Alright. It's a nice defense, but the thing is, let's take a look power point and command point wise. Ave have has missed and 6 power points, 450 command points. Industry 5 power points and 725 command points from Mordor. Haradrim Palace is level 2. He might go for the Haradrim Palace. No, he's going for the Siege Forks level 2. For either some catapults or he's gonna get his Siege Forks to level 3 for the Nazgûls. Black Riders, you know? Might be also a possible option. Yeah, you know, like I said, that's what I'm that's exactly what I mean. Like many many heroes, depending on the situation, can be better or greater. I mean, it can be better or worse than the other hero. But overall, a overall hero, like a hero which will be always useful, which you can always afford in every single game, and which always has impact with either leadership. Because the thing is, the heroes, once you, the once the units have upgrades, they fall off in terms of damage output, right? But Lourdes gives you the chance to cripple down the enemy hero. He gives you leadership. He gives you money every time you kill enemy units. 
So even if he doesn't deal too much damage himself, he has so much sportive abilities uh, that can be good in 1v1, 2v2, 3v3, 4v4. And in the early mid game, you can kill every pretty much cheap hero yourself with Carnage and Cripple. Hey, Rexa, welcome. Nazgul come out of the Siege Walk tree. If, uh, yeah, the Black Riders, you are able to recruit them from the Siege Walks level 3. Uh, in Rise of the Witch King, unlike in BFME 2, you have special units. Like units that are special, that are called so something like mini heroes, you know? And for example, for the Elven faction, would it mean to get the Snolder Warriors on the field? But you can see also, right? Only three battalions of Nolder Warriors are allowed at the same time. And to the Black Riders from the Mortar faction, it's the same. Only one of them is allowed at the same time. So they are not heroes, but they are also not normal units. Because in Rise of the Witch King, normal units, like every, every normal unit pretty much, has only the chance to level up to maximum amount of level 5. And the Black Riders or any other elf heroes or mini heroes are also able, just like the other heroes, to level up to level 10. It makes them kind of special. They cost also 2000 each and you need to get your siege works to level 3. Doesn't make too much sense, I agree with you. Why would you be able to recruit Black Riders from a Siege Warks, you are thinking? And you are thinking, right, I don't I don't understand this too, but it is how it is. Yeah, I, I, I got you, I got you. you. That make also no sense to me, <laughs> like... I'm, I'm building Siege Warks, but you wanna make Siege... No, 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 I wanna recruit some Lancers and Riders. Doesn't make too much, too much sense, but... Yeah. Yeah, true. I agree with you guys about that one. Marjan and uh, also Cat Girl. Uh, when I was a kid and played Rise of the Witch King for the first time, I was so amazed that I can control all the nine Nazguts at once <laughs> by left clicking on him once. But they are weak. I mean, they are they are strong. Don't get me wrong, but they are not as strong as they would be heroes from the fortress. However, they are also anti-heroes. They deal a lot of damage to heroes, by the way. They have also debuff, they have Morgul Blades, Screech, all the good stuff. Worm is messing up everything here from the Alvin player, by the way, in the meantime. Avi Avi is defending himself, but the problem is he has actually, no, he has actually 15 power points collected. Guys, it sounds crazy. Oh, 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 cancel. Oh, he should be canceling the barracks to get money back. Worm, be careful with the build, oh, he's running away. I mean, it sounds crazy, I know, but I think Avi Havi is still a chance. Like, the way he can do that is potentially use the army with the mist. You get power points for the ends. And you kill the fortress eventually, right? But this fortress is upgrade, so it's gonna be tankier now. Mordi is moving forward for another attack. He has now the power points he needs. Taupt was used from Mouth of Sauron. Mouth of Sauron is taking way too much damage. He has to be careful. He's... Nazgul's are diving into the backline. Oh, he's targeting him all the time. He has to be careful. I don't know why he's re he's tanky though. I mean, we need to give him that one. He's tanky. Mouth of Sauron is surprisingly tanky. He has like, look at his HP. Do you see that? 3,500 with level 3 or 4. All lances, they need to run away to this well to regenerate over time. And oh, that's a big war chant play from Smoky now. He's committing fully. There is no defense to build on. He's gonna get one-shotted if he doesn't pay attention. And killing the well means no more sustain. The Lancer is going to be taken down next. Eagle Summon is going to be chosen from the spellbook. Which will be which will be used defensively, I'm assuming. Oh, did he kill Mouth of Sauron? The answer is no, he didn't. The Malone Tree is going down. Look, the, look, the Alvin player is dropping down to 460 command points only. No heroes on the field. The thing is, the Black Riders, they are not like heroes, they cannot respawn over time or recover over time when they are level 1. So in those kind of situations, they act like a normal unit. So in order to get the self-regeneration active for the Black Riders, you need, to get them at, you need to get them at least level 2. So this one would be useless now, you know, to one unit. And you lost like 2000 now, pretty much. So they are also really expensive. And also, you need to get your Siege Works to level 3, which also costs you money and time. Eagle Summon is ready, but the thing is, can he do something with that? Because I believe if you only summon the Eagles, you won't be able to destroy the Fortress. Because he has a tower here, he has a level 3 Siege Works, which also is going to be able to shoot. 
as well as these two level 3 slaughterhouses. They are all gonna act like a tower. And the eagles, they are not able to tank too much damage, so they're gonna die quite fast. Yeah, maybe. If you can actually, yeah, right. When you are actually able to destroy these two slaughterhouses with the eagles, that would be massive. These two, he can do a lot. Because Mordo has 700 command points, yes, but if he loses this two, he's gonna drop down to 500 command points only. If he can do that, that would be massive. He was also getting his Black Riders back on the field for 2000 once again. Mouth of Sauron is level almost 5. This is very, very strong, by the way. This evil eye is really strong. It's like the Easter Light. I saw him using that one time against uh, Balrog, and he was dealing 80 or 70% of the Balrog's HP with this ability all alone. Eagle Summon is available, keep that in mind. He's getting vision now with the Lancers. He, he sees the catapult, he's gonna use the Eagles now, there we go. Oh, he's using them defensively to deal with the Black Riders, but the Eagles are not dealing too much damage. He, he's gonna eventually be able to destroy them. But I believe that's kind of overkill. I agree, I believe the best thing to do is like killing those slaughterhouses, you know? And the Eagles, they are not gonna be able to achieve too much now. Are they able to see the slaughterhouses? Yes, they are able to see the slaughterhouses. Don't chase them. They are useless now. Just let them be. Killing them is even worse than not killing them. Because what can they do now in a situation like this? There is one left. Stop wasting time. Oh, he's killing units instead. That's a mistake in my opinion. He can also kill the catapult expansions. He's finally now committing. That's what I want to see. But look how much damage they are taking. Do you see that? Because he was taking so, so much damage. Can he take down? Yeah, he's gonna take down one of them at least. The other one is not gonna be taken down. Because the eagles are dying to the tower and the siege works. Okay, he will also... Not bad, not horrible. Actually, there was a not bad eagle summon. He killed the black riders, he killed one catapult expansion, and he also killed the uh, uh, slaughterhouse level 3 with industry. So pretty good actually, not bad. I get the impression from your games and from these games that good factions basically sucks. No, 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 that's not true. Especially elves, they are in good terms. <laughs> so, and indeed, Ave Havi is still in the game. It's not like this game is over. He has 635 command points. He has 16 power points collected. But Mordo has 18 power points collected. 500 command points, that's what I'm telling you. And he has a level 3 here, that gives him 100. If he loses that, this game would be... And look, he was inv guys, he was investing 6,000 resources so far. The age of men is over. The time of the Orc has come. Exactly. But he was investing 6,000 so far into the Black Riders. Oh, he's gonna lose all these three, all these three slaughterhouses now. Going for a counter attack. The thing is, this is easy to be countered. All he has to do is get some pikemen. <clears throat> then he's good. But he has no pikemen here. He has to get pikemen really, really fast. Move. Oh, uh oh, oh, that's gonna hurt. It's gonna hurt. Sell them to the fortress. <laughs> oh, cloud freak. What happened? He's rallying call too. Oh, he was using. The doubt ability, okay. I was like, what? I was able to see something like, oh, that's a big cloud break waste. It's a waste of cloud break, not gonna lie. It's over. The time of the orc has come. It's a big, big, big waste of the cloud break. He did not even manage to kill the black riders, you know? And that's a 15 power points wasted just like that. Hmm. And Smoky is building towers also next to these buildings. Gonna make it harder for the, for the Elven player to commit against them. The age of men is over. The time of the Orc has come. Smoke is trolling. Maybe he's trolling, but no. I mean. Actually, Elven player has now much more command points available than the Mordor player. What is going on? Thing is, Smoky is gonna be the first one who's gonna get 25 power points collected, you know? This game is not over yet. I mean, Smokey can still win this one. He has also Haradrim Arches on the field. Mouth of Sauron is getting some levels. Elven players keeping the troll there. Orders from stinking Morgul rats. 
Orgul Reds. Chocho Les Marcel. Marcelo, welcome. Exactly. And why never play with more initial resources? 2000, 3000 or so, or more strategies can be used for. Because that would not be competitive. I mean, there are. This is like a fan myth, uh, like a fun thing, you know, when you are starting with two, three, four thousand, but that's not competitive because some factions would get, benefit so much from it and some, other, some others don't. Okay, nice one. Actually, uh, Ave Havi is doing a nice job. 785 command points available for elves and 500 command points available for Smoky. He has Worm almost pick up. Yeah! Yeah! Let's go! Let's pick up, Jeff. Pick up, pick up. Yeah! 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 We need to give credits to NoFlow, who was just investing 10 thousand points of his channel points for you guys to hear the death effect uh oh uh oh be careful oh, okay the optability is so nice actually this is, an, this is also very nice nullifying the worm oh the rain of fire oh! <laughs> this is the same situation like the sun flare guys or not doesn't deal too much damage what what did he achieve now with this one that's the question didn't achieve too much Balrog is the way to go. Sunflare? Nah. He's gonna go for the Giant Eagle now, which is gonna be a nice counter unit to this uh, Black Riders, definitely. So you can chase them down all the time. Um, where are the Haradrim Arches, actually? Let me check. Where, did he lose the Arches he had? I'm not sure. No, he has them here, I believe, right? That's a miss, I see. No, those, those are only Oryx. Okay, he was able to save one of them. Entmud is coming up now for the siege for the Alvin player, Ave Ave. He has 10 power points after the Cloud Freak into Eagle Ally summon. Nearly 800 command points available. And we have Smokey dropping down to 500 command points only with the one level 3 slaughterhouse he has in the, in the backside. I mean, next to the fortress with the industry now. Smokey has not that much money. And I don't know if he will be ready to, to get, you know... To, to defend himself pretty much against the siege. I'm not sure. Smog doesn't know how to end the game, maybe. What's that? Smog is wasting power points. I believe this sun, uh, this uh, rain of fire was also a waste. Didn't achieve too much. Uh, he could have done much, much better. Uh, Peto, the, uh, the top 10 list right now is not up to date. I need to change that after this after this stream, you know? I also need heroes. Yeah, maybe heroes would be nice. Indeed, we see a Eagle and Arvin now at the same time. So, pretty much two heroes now. Uh, Arvin is always nice, but I believe it might be a little bit too late for her, you know what I'm saying? Like, a little bit too late. Oh, the evil... Oh, okay. <clears throat> The evil eye, I was, to be honest, I, I'm kind of surprised, guys. I was really expecting the evil eye to deal much more damage to the... Do you see how much damage he dealt to the eagle with the eagle eye? Oh, oh, but nice speed! Use barbed arrow shot for Smokey! Let's see barbed arrow shot now. Oh, the barbed arrow shot! Nice one! Holy moly, this deals damage. That's a nice one. Oh, oh, getting into the back line for the Black Riders. They are getting debuffed all the time, by the way, from the level 2 passive from the Black Riders. Mouth of Sauron is diving in. Doubt that it has been used. But there comes the reinforcements from the Lancers and Arvin from the Alvin player. Uh, Ave Have. But I believe Must uh, Mr. Smoke is going to dominate this fight. With even some peasants on the field. <laughs> Rohan peasants. Do you see that? Yeah. <laughs> Now, you know, the peasants are like, hey elves, you sported us in Helm's Deep. Now it's our time to pay back. Let's destroy Mordor together. Because the power of friendship, we are stronger together. I mean, these peasants, I don't like them that much. They look like from beef and you want it, they are kind of, I don't know, are they even good for something? I've never, done, I've never seen them doing anything good, you know? Every time I see them, they die in a second. Uh, Luke Nukem, thanks for the follow, appreciate that. And yeah, what a what a fiesta! Like 
If there was, we have three beards. Oh, Traki, my friends, your favorite hero is here. The protector of Angorn Forest. Look how, how he's looking at you with his red eyes. Love this game. Yeah, you're going to enjoy, hopefully, your stay then. Appreciate, appreciate the follow. Welcome. Arvin's Flats can kill Black Riders. Yes. I feel I, I think she can one-shot them. But the thing Come is, you cannot hit them. Because... The to it is likely... Oh, that's bad. Oh, that's bad, actually, guys. He lost the level 4 Black Riders. If he, if he can kill with the Eagles the Slaughterhouse level 3, that's gonna hurt Mr. Smog so much. But I believe he cannot do it, right? He cannot do it. No, no, no. Or? If, he, if this Eagle gets... No, no, no. Okay, no. It's not possible anymore. Or? Or? <laughs> I'm not sure. Oh, 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 oh. One more? Oh, close. One more attack, it would be enough. But now that is the cloud break. And Treebeard is trampling them down. Treebeard is like, oh, I'm gonna trample all of you guys. I'm not only a siege weapon. I'm also a horse. <laughs> Look, he's throwing on the ground. The eagle's back in the business. And do you guys see that? They are throwing all the time. The guy, one of them is throwing, then the other one is throwing. The one of them is throwing. Oh, look, the fire damage he took. This is from Mr. Smok. Yes, it was from Mr. Smok. He almost got one-shotted with the units. Tibet is moving now with the eagle. This might be the end of the game, if this is gonna be enough. Uh, PowerPoint-wise, we have also... Look, the PowerPoints from Ave Havi. He has almost the PowerPoints he needs for the flood. Uh, almost, like one PowerPoint away. Only. We bring swords from Lorien. And that's gonna be the end of the game, I believe. With the flood, he can kill all the expansions easily. And then he can commit with the tree build, right? And even the giant eagle can help him. He's getting close. He's gonna finish off this one first, which makes sense. I like that. But look, this barbed arrow shot. One of them only was almost able to burst down this eagle. But uh, yeah, Smokey is now down to what? 475 command points. His command points capped. You can see his money yourself. Level 8, level 10 maybe do something, but that's not going to be the case because this, yeah. 3 bit. Anyways, let's see. The siege will begin. I see you. I will be used. Warchan is away on cooldown. Doubt will be used now from Mouth of Sauron on the enemy units. Archers. Look, this 3 bit. Look, I like this. He's like, I don't care about fire. I don't fear death. And so, oh, the Sun Flare. Get all the expansions around the fortress. This is so weird, right? What is this happening? I don't understand that. Look, the Sun Flayer was not killing the Goblin expansions, but it actually killed... Oh, never mind. It's also not... It's only killing the Katas on top of the, on top of the things. Uh, Sivar Sreva. Thanks for the follow. Appreciate it. Welcome. Very best of evening to you all. Glad to see some action. Valkonoid, welcome. Glad to see you in the chat. Oh, that's not gonna be enough. The Sun Flayer was a bad choice. Guys, can he not go for the flood? From these two? He can go for the flood or not? We come to protect we to from the but why he went for the for the thing? Yeah, but why he went for the sun flare? It doesn't make any sense to me. I, I mean was using it directly on the fortress too. Like he's saying, well I'm stupid. You know, in the in the chat. Do you see that? You have my sword. Uh, switch iron back. Appreciate the follow. Welcome to the stream. Thank you so much. I don't know why he didn't take the flat. Yeah, the flat would be the best way to go. Because not only you would kill all the expansion, but also even the level 3 siege works behind. Because he killed nothing. Not even the Haradrim Palace got killed. And Treebeard died right after. But we're gonna get some more ends now. Eagle is back in the business. Level almost 3. Um, and Mouth of Sauron is gonna be used for harassment. Pretty much. He's almost level 9. Level 10 is gonna give you the chance to use the Descend ability, which I think is gonna... I've never seen this in an actual game, actually. So, when you use it on the enemy units, they apparently they're gonna fight against each other. So, it can be very nice. Okay. Problem is, I think Master, Smoke is too low. From this fate. Nah, Smokey is just too low on money. Look at the range from the fortress, though. Long range. 
Uh, oh, 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 oh. This uh, evil eye doesn't deal too much damage to the eagle. But eagle doesn't also to deal too much damage. All ground stands maybe to make him deal less damage to you. Oh, he's gonna get... Look this now. Oh, oh no. He... Oh, no way. <laughs> uh oh. He's gonna potentially lose the arches as well. Yeah, that's that's it, right? I mean, I, how can Smog turn this around now? Even this is not gonna change too much. Rain of Fire might give you the chance to defend one of the attacks. Like, if you use it on top of the enemy units here, you know, against Alvin player, you might be able to defend yourself one time. We have seen it doesn't do much against Fortress. It doesn't do, it doesn't do too much against buildings. Oh, that's an eye into the worm. Eye is needed because you need to get vision to use something. Oh, and this is gonna be oh he's canceling okay he he aborted his tribute, but he's getting money back at least for not losing tribute he has now almost three thousand. <clears throat> what needs to be killed now? That's the question. There is only one level three mal on three. I think he can kill this one if he wants to. The worm is dealing so much damage. Two shotting the barracks. Two shotting the level three buildings as well. Did he lose Arvin though? No, he, Arvin is still alive. Arvin is level 4 as well, at the bottom left side. <clears throat> what is the plan now for Smoky? That's the question. He has to eventually revive his uh, Mouth of Sauron, I believe. And the Black Riders didn't do too much, you know? Because, again, he was losing them many, many times. And he was recruiting them like 3 or 4 times. Like, he invested at least 6,000 resources. Uh, for the Black Riders, and they couldn't achieve too much. Look, this barbed arrow shot. Pretty nice. No, also knocks down the enemy units. Oh, look. <laughs> he was burning, and then he's going on the river, and like, ah, no, yeah, I'm not burning anymore. So funny. I like that. Oh, we have Arvin now. I mean, not Arvin, sorry, Elrond, the daddy of Arvin. Entmud is coming up for the Elven player. This Rain of Fire is almost available. Uh, do you see how hard to level up Arvin to level 6 versus a good player? Yeah, probably. Of course, it's hard. But the reward is crazy. That's what I'm trying to say. Now I have a thing. Ah, and I don't know what happened. The industry is going to be used one more time from Smoky on the slaughterhouse in the behind. Almost level 3. He has also two towers here for defense. I will not submit so easily. Okay, Mouth of Sauron is back in the business. Almost level 9. But I'm actually surprised. I would like to see the damage from the evil eye against the hero or against the end potentially. But this end is already low. He's gonna be dying anyway. Looks like Easter light to me. Daubt will be used. But he cannot take a fight. Why would you use Daubt here? I don't. Maybe it doesn't make sense. I'm actually curious about how much damage it would be dealing against heroes like Elrond, for example, you know? Yeah, exactly. With level 6, you get floods. And floods from Arvin um, can one-shot every level 3 building in the game. Eldrond is also... The combination... The thing is, with the combination with Eldrond and Arvin is kind of insane when you think about it, right? So the way it works is you can use flood with Arvin. And the second you use it, you use restoration with Eldrond. And you can use flood immediately again. Okay, he's gonna go for the barricades now, next. Rain of, uh, Rain of Fire is available for the mortal player. Might be using it defensively here, by the way. Let's see. He's gonna use barricades first defensively. That is an eagle. That's an arrow volley! What is Awe Habe doing? He was not paying attention! And he lost everything! Just like that! This game includes so many mistakes. It is unbelievable. Why would you be clumped like this? And Mordi is back in the business. But he lost the slaughterhouse with the industry buff on it to Elrond and his army. And he's gonna lose even more slaughterhouses. I mean, maybe saying Mordi is back in the business is kinda overreaction. But because Elven player has literally 1000 command points. Like, he has a lot of money. That means he can replace all this stuff he just lost. But again, those kind of mistakes, if you make, them too, if you make too many mistakes like this, that can actually cost you the game. And Alvin Play is now retreating. The thing is, 
I mean, Abe Javi is an experienced player, so he needs to expect that the Reign of Fire is available again, right? So you can use it against the units, and I... Oh, look, this little... Look at all the warriors now. Now we are talking. Guild has been taking down all the warriors, the elite units, just like the Black Riders from the Mordo faction, and he has already two of them on the field. Once they reach level 5, the Weapon Song is going to increase their damage and armor by 100%. Damage by 50, armor by 100. Eldron is level almost 3. Level 4 is going to unlock the Atelas. Uh, level 3 is going to unlock the Atelas. And also Arvin has Atelas, right? So they have double heal now for the heroes. Plus the heal from the spellbook. So you have a lot of sustain for the heroes as well. And yeah, I believe in the very late game, in this current stage, how can you deal with that? Uh, Treebeard is also back in the business. Uh, he's trying to get level 10, guys. How much experience you get from killing a statue? Not much, but also not bad, actually, for him. I mean, he's level 9. Still getting a quarter, almost, uh, of experience for killing a very weak building. Barak's level 3. He's gonna get the third one. And remember, the Nolder Warriors are limited to 3 only. You can't have more than that. You know? Evil Eye on Builder, please. Uh, he was using Evil Eye against the level 3 Malon tree here. But he's gonna be also able to take it down. Remember, he has Rain of Fire available. So he can use it to deal with the enemy units. But he has to kill this 3-bit first. Arvin, almost level 5. The Malon tree level 3 has been taken down. Really close to level 10. I would love to see Mouth of Sauron getting level 10. I believe if he kills this, he's gonna become level 10. Rain of Fire, still available. He has to kill this end if he wants to be able to survive. That's a rallying call being used now. And I believe he's desperately trying to get level 10. Nice shot on Treebeard, just like that. The Eagle commitment from the summon and from the fortress. Now we have three Eagles up on the field. He's gonna go for the Magma, which is gonna kill the, nerve, uh, the melee attackers in a second. The fortress has armor, so it's gonna take you some time to, to destroy that. But Eldron is also around smashing as well as the Nolder Warriors by drawing the swords. But there comes level not 10 yet Mouth of Sauron. I cannot believe it. He is not level 10 yet. Do you see how much experience he's missing, guys? The opt will be used. The Eagles keep committing against the fortress. They don't have much time remaining, but it might be enough. Level 10 unlocked. We're gonna use now the Descent ability. He is using it. That means... Oh, but the fortress is gone. They're gonna fight against each other now. Yeah, they're gonna fight against each other now. <laughs> but Mouth of Sauron is dying. There are too many eagles to deal with. And that's the last remaining building. And he was not using the Rain of Fire for, for, for that ability. I don't understand. Why was he not using it? I believe he has nothing left, right? Yeah, that's the only building that keeps Smokey alive. The Siege Works, which is going down. GG. The score is even once again. Two. On the right side, bottom right side, we have the orange Elvin player Mr. Smok against the top left red Man of the West player Ave Ave. Sakura Forest is the map for the game number five. Did you really invest 18,000 channel points, Paul Steep? No way you did. Really? Pretty, pretty early barracks coming up here for Mr. Smok at the bottom right side. But the thing is, Smokey is actually, when he's playing the Alvin faction, he's playing very, really aggressively, you know? He's not like a normal Alvin player who's gonna play very defensively. And two, two farms, three farms into the barracks. So it's gonna be a delete barracks against the early. His build is trapped. His build is trapped. <laughs> I'm fine with a rematch. Should I just leave now? Because you guys don't want to see this matchup anyway, right? Take it this way. Guys. This guy is taking a day off from the work today. He's calling it sick. Who needs two, two builders? Exactly. Who needs two builders when, we, when you can have only one? Oh, uh, but smart, you know, that's a Jinx, you know, Jinx Alvin player. That only happens to Alvin players. Oh, he's moving. He can't move from the stones, right? And he, why can't he, what, but, what? I don't understand why he cannot move this way. Why can't he get out from this area? The only way to actually get him out is by losing the Malone stream. Oh, that's a horrible handicapped start for Smokey. 
I mean, Smokey is defeating him. <laughs> it happened to him too! What am I watching? He was forced to demolish the archer range! No, but he demolished it. He demolished it. He demolished it, guys. No way! That happened two times in 20 seconds! <laughs> oh no. But he was he was not he was like not patient enough like Smokey. Smokey just gave up on this build though. He's trying hard by building a wall up, trying to exit, but you know. Abe Abe was demolishing his building. Okay. That's an offensive creep from Abe Abe on the right side of the river. Smokey was already able to creep this one. It's the first attack now with Lorien, Warriors and Pikeman. Let's see how well Abe Abe will be able to defend himself. Against Lorien, Warriors and Pikeman. The thing is, he doesn't see them coming just yet. He will be able to see them now. He has to react. He's coming, going back, but I think it's going to be too late. And he's going to potentially lose his farm. But the soldier build speed time is coming in clutch now. And he will be able to get in position. Maybe. Rallying call might be used defensively. Because this can hurt. This can hurt. Fighting here would be a mistake against buffed units. And he's going for a counter attack. A2 XL08. Thanks for the follow. Appreciate that so much. Welcome to this stream. Hope you're going to enjoy your stay. It means a lot to me. Okay. He's taking the fight regardless. Hold crown stance. Uh, not, use, not being used, by the way. Should be using hold crown stance. And he's actually going for a delete. Defensive. Uh, oh, that's going to be a mistake from Abhi Hive, right? Yeah, he's going to not be able to... Can he destroy this one, though? Many, many archers. No buffs on these units. And... No. He won't be able to take it down. That's a really great start for uh, Smokey. Because he killed a lot of units. He's still fighting. And look how many Gondor Knights he was also able to kill. And keep the Man of the West player super busy. You force him to use the... Oh, look, this Lorien Warriors are still alive. But they're going to eventually go down now. They're getting invisible. Smokey is abusing the Alvin passive. No, they can't, right? They can't. They removed the they removed the passive of the invisibility from the Lorien Warriors. But Smokey is playing with one build only, guys. The build is still trapped, right? Yeah, the build is still trapped, as you can see. Between the buildings. The farm is going down. He's moving now from the bottom side with Lancers and Gondor Knights, I mean. Going for a counter-attack. Uh, there are some pikemen on, in position now from Smokey to keep those arches protected against the Gundam Knights. This farm is going to be taken down next. He's able to see these units. They are able to get stealthed. Enemy stealth unit discovered. They change this in this case, right? They are indeed able to get stealthed. Because you saw the message, right? Or maybe was it on this unit? I'm not sure. On this arches maybe. can tell. But the Slorian warriors are still remaining on the field. They are all about to hit level 3. It's like the movie 300, you know? When you are in a spot like this, the outnumbering is, doesn't matter. Because not many units of him is, are able to attack you. They cannot, they cannot surround you. They are also faster than the soldiers. But this Slorian warriors, yes, they're gonna go down. But it's absolutely fine. Because they did so much work here uh, for Mr. Smog. So much. 350 command points now for... Um, Man of the West, 450 command points for elves with only one builder. As he's still not able to use the builder now for the since since the beginning of the game, pretty much. He's going for a massive attack now. Rallying call should be awaitable for elves. Yeah, it's gonna be awaitable sooner than from the Man of the West player. And that's gonna that's like that's what I mean. Like aggressive playstyle with elven faction is also possible. He was putting pressure from the beginning of the game, pretty much. Trying to get rise, trying to get rise of the Witch King 2.01 is a nightmare. But what's the problem? I mean, what is the issue? Like, the website doesn't work. Oh, that's gonna be a massive rallying call there. Look, I like the way he's body blocking. That's so nice. Uh, he's playing it so nice, Smokey here, by the way. And Avi Avi is gonna call it just GG. You see the orange dwarven player, Mr. Smock, at the bottom side. And the red man of the west player, Avi Havi, at the top side. This is the map Jungles of Fararat, which makes the map kind of good for dwarves, I would say. Because he can expand offensively with the mineshafts and, you know, 
And hopefully he might achieve something with the first pushes. The man of the West player can potentially go for an early bar, uh, for an offensive barracks as well. Two mineshafts. Uh, three mineshafts into the Hall of Warriors, I'm assuming, is going to be the build order. But I would love to see here is also stable from the Man of the West play because this map is massive. It's a really big map. So having some mobile units on your side can be always nice. Do you have any opponents to face against? Shanks, which faction in your opinion have the best synergy in 2v2? Uh, Engmar, Felwind. <laughs> Felwind, let's go for Velvind, my friend. Felwind is so nice. Gives you a lot of bombo combo potential for the synergy you are looking for. I mean, like there is not. I feel like in the in the two v twos, the best combination is evil good combined. You know, because the advantage of the of the good factions in Rise of the Witch King is like of course sustain leadership statue with the fear resistance and just like healing. You know. And, uh, and the evil factions on the other side don't have that. So if you play 2v2, one of you is evil, one of you is good. You can always... I was casting a couple of 2v2 games the other day. For example, uh, in the 2v2 match, the good guy, the good, you know, the, play, the player who was playing the good faction, I mean, was building a well at the fortress of his evil ally. So he has su sustained for free. Um, you're gonna have... That's a very interesting playstyle. I like this though. I like this. Smokey is going for something different. And I like to see that. In BFME 1 you are asking Toma. Ah, okay. In BFME 1 is something different. In BFME 1, uh, best ally for sporting your ally is gonna be Mordor. Because Mordor is offering you a lot of additional leadership or Isengard. But again, then it's also gonna matter what your ally is. The combination of one faction in a team, like when you are playing double Eisen, double Gondor, double Rohan, it's really bad. So ideally, you want to have two different factions. And also in BFMU1, it's like good and evil combined is pretty good. Gondor, Rohan, team composition is also pretty good. One of my favorites in BFMU1. Gondor, Isengard is good. Mordor, Isengard is good. Mordor, Rohan, I mean, many, many different matchups are really, really great and playable. Battle Wagon start. I don't know if your if your opponent is around or not, Mission of X. I mean, this is not over yet, so maybe if Abe have a win set, we're gonna see even one more game after this one. So he's gonna creep this troll layer at the top right side. Uh, he's kind he's using oil barrel actually against his farm. That's a that's something we don't see very often, like a battle wagon start from the Forge Forks. But I like that. Something different, something new. They're creeping the troll layer slowly, but surely he has to be careful though. He's taking way too much damage. Just kill him. Oh my goodness. He took so much damage. The battle wagon was actually able to destroy this one. That's the extra upgrade. You know, you see that extra are the best up is the best upgrade when you wanna deal damage to buildings. Build has to be, be careful. He's getting bullied by the battle wagon. One more but he has to build a wall hub! Oh my goodness! Got killed by a battle wagon. Look at this damage from this extra verse against pikemen, one shooting them. Holy moly. Almost level 2, by the way. Not really almost, half a level. Creep is gonna be secured, but Builder is down. And he has another battle wagon here with the extra upgrade. Two of them, he's gonna put fire on the ground to deal damage over time against the pikemen. And yeah, you guys. Kinda don't like battle wagons, but why would you not use aggressive stance? Rallying call, do you see how much damage they are dealing? Rallying call has been used from both the players on guard. Oh, but he has to be careful with the battle wagon. He's taking way too much damage against the pikemen in midi fight. Just keep running all the time. They're able to keep shooting while they are running. But Man of the West play is expanding very nicely. We have 450 command points available for Ave and 350 command points only for Smoky. Smoky lost this mineshaft. He was also using Rallying Call on his Guardians. And Guardians without the Mineshaft connection are pretty bad. Since they are once again really slow. They are the slowest swordsman in the game by far. Okay. He's gonna trample them now. Yeah, there we go. Look, this this is like crazy damage. When you trample down the swordsman with the battle wagons, it's like a splash trample. You one-shot them in most situations. 
Okay, he's gonna creep this one as well. I mean, actually, Avi is creeping a lot. He was able to creep this one. He was able to creep the troll layer. And now he's creeping both the work layers in the middle of the map as well. Smokey, in the meantime, has creeped nothing so far. But he was able to destroy one of the Malons. Oh, that's a Eowyn. I mean, we see different stuff today, guys. I like that. When was the last time we have seen Eowyn on the field? I cannot even remember. <laughs> like, it's been a long time. <clears throat> I think last time when I saw Eowyn is when Man of the West was facing against Engma. Because Smite from Eowyn can be nice against Engma Trailmaster units, you know? When Westfold fell. True. I'm actually curious about her damage with the Smite against Battle Wagons. I would like to see that. But she has a hidden OP ability, the Disguise. The ability to look, to look like a Rohirrim is just over, 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 over broken. Look how much damage she's... <laughs> Eowyn is no man, but she, he smited, he smited, she, I mean, she smited one guardian, <laughs> that's what she did, I, I cut you bad, thanks for the follow, appreciate that, hopefully you're not gonna cut me bad, but welcome to this stream, he's losing one against one guardian, smite has a long cooldown too, Cheap men of the West heroes are good. I mean, she's quite cheap, yeah. She costs what? How much? 1000? Oh, her husband is here. Faramir. Faramir, the son of Denethor, the brother of Boromir, the favorite son of Denethor, Kappa. Kapi. Okay, the mineshaft here is gonna be demolished by Smokey. Smokey is doing a lot of pressure with the battle wagons, and one of them has been taken down already by the, by the Elvin. Okay, now your, your chance to use smite. I would like to see the damage now. Let's see. This has like 50% HP. Oh, deals not, not bad actually. Not bad for a hero for 1000 resources. Not bad. This guy is unlocked. Exactly, Flaming Wizard. Look how fast she is. She has even Shield Maiden now. Look, she's popping off level 6. Ave dominating this game. Look at the minimap of yours at the bottom left side. Ave has units everywhere. Yes, double heroes. Paramia and Eowyn. Oh, she even one-shotted Gollum by trampling him. How is this possible? She trampled him one time and Gollum got killed in a second. <laughs> Lord. <laughs> Eowyn. The shield made enough for Ohan. You know, the Gollum was just you know, taking a walk on the street. Oh, look. He's actually creeping everything from the map. He's gonna be legit able to creep every single layer on the map with his pikeman. This is impressive. Oh, but he's changing his mind. Going now back a little bit. The, the ring is on the ground. The thing is, Faramir's warning arrow is actually very nice against heroes. It's a counter hero ability because you can slow them down. But in a situation like this, King Brand's slam ability, slam shot, is gonna be much, much more impactful. What arrow ability? I can show you. So, we have also Eomir. Where is Eowyn when we need her? Uh, Eowyn has to be somewhere around this side. Am I blind? I'm not sure where she is. She, did she die or something? I think she died. So she has Smite, which is the spear throw. Uh, then she has um, Disguise, which makes her look like a Rohirrim. And then she has Shields made of Rohan, which increases her armor by 100%. That's it. And she can, of course, get mounted and dismounted. That's a massive attack. Smokey's gonna lose everything, right? Yeah, Smokey's losing everything. Yeah, there she is. She's not dead. That's her abilities. Smite, Disguise, and Shield Maiden. Smokey has uh, 250 command points. <laughs> he has one farm somewhere. I don't know where it is, but he has one farm somewhere. There it is. That's the last farm from... Look his money. What is Smokey trying to do? Is he trying to go for... Go uh, for uh, Galadriel without any resource buildings or something. I'm not sure. I think like Smokey wants to go for the game number seven chat. Are we influenced much by BFME 2 1.9? Uh, what do you mean? Influenced. Ave, I mean, Smokey has nothing. Like, when I say nothing, he has this is his army, guys, okay? 
Yes, not a single farm. Not a single production building. That's the last remaining building from, from Smoky. That's it. But yeah, it might be the case because <clears throat> uh, Ave Ave is normally a BFME 2 player. Who's also playing now Rise of the Witch King. Shield Maiden was used. 100% armor doesn't sound too, doesn't sound too shabby actually. It's quite nice. 100% armor? That's, that's a lot. Use disguise. Use disguise. Don't be noob. Look, 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 look. Oh, I cannot tell. Is this a Rohirrim? One unit remaining from the battalion. But when I, when I click on him, I see uh, Elvin. How is this possible? Oh, she has even Forge Blades purchased. Elvin. Elvin rides the army of the man to victory. Guys, you know what time it is. It is the time for the last game in the series. On the map, Fury and Zeal. We have the red Isengard player, Ave Ave, at the right side. And the orange Engmar player, Mr. Smog, at the left side. Warchant. It's gonna be chosen by Engma, Smoky, and Isengard player can also go for the Creepane if he chooses to start with the Warg Pit. But I'm assuming he's gonna start with the Uruk Pit. Kirian Deal is looking nice. I like this map. So two furnaces into the Warg Pit, indeed, okay. We're gonna have an early barracks coming up for Smoky. The mill, Hall of the Kingsman into the second mill is the build order from the Engma player. So early barracks. And because of the work pit start, I'm assuming he's gonna go for the Creepane. Why? Because the work pack, work packs or work riders, they have the whole ability, right? So they don't need war chant. Isengard for the win. So work packs on the way. He still didn't oh he actually never mind. He didn't choose anything just yet. He can still go for the Warchan, which I would which I think is gonna be a mistake. Uh, and I don't know about this. Warg packs are not very strong, you know. They are not as strong as spiderlings in those kind of situations. They are good for harassment. However, unlike the uh, spider links you need to make sure that you send them two by two because one of the battalions i believe is gonna take a long time to destroy uh, the resource buildings early welcome it doesn't make wolves and are and not works so he's gonna use the whole ability and look how hard he's losing the fight still i mean that's a buffed unit against non-buffed units the work packs are really bad in those kind of situations you know I mean, he's not losing the fight, don't get me wrong, but imagine they are being buffed from the war chant. The Gundabad warriors would dominate this fight. Took a lot of damage. <laughs> don't attack Thrall, you noobs, he's saying. Oh, he, oh, he was attacking the Thrall Master, that's why. Because Thrall Master is, of course, way, way tankier than the normal units. Um, are Engma spellcasters meta? Not really. I mean, they are like always like a off-meta units, like a situational unit you can always try to go for, but um, they are very expensive and also they are very vulnerable. They are very squishy, so you can maybe make them work in some matchups. Maybe against dwarves could be nice when you get, you know, on dwarves uh, because dwarves cannot catch you, chase you, but against elves or something in late game, I don't know, the spellcasters or the, the the sorcerers in this case you are talking about are gonna potentially die very quickly. Hey, Matty. The mill is going down. Nice one. Nice one. Oh, finish it off. Almost an entire level gained from that one. Went for the Kribane start, of course, because of the... Uh, work pit start, getting some more crossbowmen on the field for defense, which makes sense because you need to have some. I mean, the thing is, you can use your work packs for damage, like he does, and he's actually being able to deal a lot of damage to the buildings and taking down now two mills already. And your crossbowmen are gonna be your defense against the Gundabad warriors, against the pikemen, because the thing what now is gonna be 
the case is, of course, Smokey has to get some defensive units against the work packs, right? In this case, the pikemen. And the pikemen here, they are very weak against crossbowmen. But now, he's gonna have wolf riders. And yeah, guess what? Isengard has zero pikemen here. It's gonna be that's gonna be hallelujah, hallelujah moment for Smokey because he's gonna kill all these crossbow men. No big deal. There we go. Now what? <laughs> it's a mistake. Like you should not do that against Engma because Engma can always get so so easily wolf riders on the field. You know, trampling one more trample and then he's gonna be able to kill them all, just like that. Beautiful. Thank you for streaming with me. Keep up the good work. Thank you, man. Really appreciate the nice words that you are enjoying. Um, yeah, 400 command points available for Mr. Smok and 300 command points only for Ave Ave. Smokey is in a little bit better spot right now because he has now pretty much a perfect answer to everything what Isengard has, offer, has, has to offer. He's getting some warp packs. They are also not very cheap. Like, they cost only 50 less than the Spiderlings. But I feel like they are way less impactful than Spiderlings. Creep is gonna be secured. Nice one. In the meantime, he's gonna creep this one. He, he needs he needs to get some money now at this point, right? He has to make something happen. He needs to get some money because he's down a lot. And Isengard, yes, later on you have no money tr trouble with Isengard, right? You have Devastation, you have like Whiteman of Dunland. Eventually from the clan setting, you have Pillage from Lords, you have Field of Fires, you have Industry, you have so many, so many tools to boost your money. But uh, early on you don't have that. So keeping your furnaces protected is very important to survive the early game. To get to the strong mid to late game economy. And once again, he has no pikemen on the field. I cannot believe it. He is not making any pikemen. He does underestimate this wolf riders a lot. I don't like that. He might also creep this one, but if he wants to, with the pikemen, I think that's gonna be also the case. He needs as much money as possible. I like the fact that he's expanding offensively. That's very nice. Bad fight to take for the wolf uh, work, uh, work packs. Uh, the creep is going to be secured just like that. Beautiful. Hey, Nikki, welcome. This Tony Shanks, what? 4v4 tournament? Of course not. <laughs> how can you do a 4v4 tournament? Do you think? Do you build? How can you guys imagine how hard this is going to be? Not only you won't be able to stream it because it's 4v4. But then you have to get 8 people online at the very same time. This is... Very hard. <laughs> so when you are gonna make a team. When you don't make a team, it's maybe possible. But when you're gonna make a team, everyone is signing up with his 3 allies. Finding the perfect time in which both the teams will have all the members online. is very hard. When I started playing this game, I was in high school and now I'm doctor, still loving it. Hey man, I'm happy. What kind of doctor you are? Like, because, you know, doctor, I think, is like not telling enough information, right? When I may ask, of course, are you dentist? Are you chirurg? Are you, you know, I don't know. For 4v4, they can play and give you the replays, you can do it. <laughs> but then they want to convince me to make 4v4s. We have our you can... Shanks just put strict rules. I mean, you will play Saturday and if they don't, can ban them. <clears throat> you need to be in a, in a small community like TFME games, you need to be really forgiving in terms of this one. If you ban people for not showing up once or twice, then you will see and realize that after two weeks, oh, I don't have any more any more players left, you know what I'm saying? Like, we have not many people, so banning the existing people who are willing to participate in those events is potentially the worst thing that you can do. Of course, you can ban them if they're gonna be 
not showing up multiple times, but you need to be more forgiving. And this would be a community with like five or six thousand active online players every single day, then you can do that. But it has like what 50, 60 players online daily. Sarius, good night. Okay, Isengard is still in the game. 450 command points available for Engma, 10 power points almost. He can go for the Orc Summon because the Warp is still level 1. And Orc Summon can be very nice. And Avehave is still 3 power points away from his own Devastation, which will be needed if he wants to be able to get back. Oh, he's going for the Untamed Allegiance. This is something we see more and more often, don't we? We see that often, actually, guys, from Engma. Which gives Engma the chance to recruit some trolls. I like it. So now we have cave trolls on the field. And not only um, this will permanently be under control from um, Mr. Smog. But also these trolls, they cost less. They cost only 400 each. So 100 less is actually quite a lot. Count this one. Exactly. Okay, the furnace has been taken down. The straws are hitting very hard against buildings too. Work pit is finally level 2 for the work riders from Ave Have. But definitely, we need to agree that Mr. Smog has the control of this game so far in the game number 7. In the deciding game uh, with, Eisen with Engma against Isengard. Okay, so the furnace here on the front side is going to be protected for now. Troll has to be careful. Oh, smashing with the tree. I like the trolls with the tree in their hands. I don't know why, but I, I cannot get used to that when they don't have any trees in their hands. Uh, Latonen, thanks for the follow. When I use trolls, for example, when I was ever using trolls in BFMU1, I always was picking a tree. But if you guys think that trolls in Rise of the Witch King are overpowered, in BFMU1, they are hitting like a truck. With leadership, you can. You can stack multiple times, you know, for example, you can use Darkness Eye, Witch King Drama, Troll, and you can make your <clears throat> Trolls deal 500% more damage. <laughs> then you touch a hero like Ganda, for example, one of the most expensive heroes, and boom, he's gone. They are the main force of Mordor in BFM new one. Uh, what is the most you had? We had 360. I believe 380 when we had the finals two weeks ago uh, in the Good Against Evil tournament. Gandalf? No, Ga what? Gandalf PF me is ho much, much better than in Rise of the Witch King. But the game is just different. The game is based on leadership, you know, in BFME 1. In the Rise of the Witch King, it's spam. Like, you, that, it doesn't matter if you lose one of your units. But in BFME 1, keeping your units alive, leveling them up to level 10, and making them stronger is the way to go. Because you don't have that many units. Like, you don't have 1,000 command points. You cannot make, like, five big armies, you know? That's not possible in DFM1. It's a different game, pretty much. Okay? And my player will be able to see these furnaces. Uh, on the other side, he's also defending himself. The mill is going to be the target, but he was using Felvin, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, Felvin was used. The mill is safe. Uh, this troll creep has been taken down by Isengard. That means um, Mrs. Mock cannot get any more trolls on the field any soon. And untamed, untamed allegiance is going to be kind of useless. I mean, not useless, don't get me wrong, because you can still use it on the wolf den. But, uh, you know, ideally you want to use it on a creep. Because getting 75% faster units on the field for a couple of seconds, mm, I don't know if this is going to be... Always a good option. Uh, the mill has been taken down here. 700 command points available for Engma, Mr. Smog, and 500 command points available for Ave Havi, the Isengard player on the right side. Engma is moving forward now. What do you think if Isengard in Rise of Twitch can get skill from the fortress like BFM Me too? I don't know, man. I don't know. This is something. I don't know, because it's kind of unfair, you know, when you give it to one faction, one evil faction, you need to kind of give it to all, like, you know what I'm saying? 
Like saying, this is the faction, this is the evil faction which gets healed, the other ones don't get it. This is really fair. We are saying this game will go to lead game. In version 1.0, and if me Legolas has machine gun. <laughs> Benzi. <laughs> Guys, in the very first version, I believe, in BFME 1, Gandalf was faster than Witch King <laughs> on his, on his uh, Felbies, you know? And then you get one shot time with Easter Light. Gandalf was so over overpowered in the first version of BFME 1, it was so funny. <laughs> Machine Gun, like, I just could imagine in my head, like, like, doof, 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 doof. Vernis is gonna go down. I don't think this game is gonna last that long. I might be wrong though, but does Isengard have Devastation? Yeah, he was do using Devastation. Look his money though. I mean, he has a lot of money. He can go for Sharku now if he wants to, right? Sharku is nice. Uh, Sharku, he has already Sharku. And, and Lourdes too. Okay, so Sharku, what's, what's the level from Sharku? He's level 3. Level 7 is gonna be the time for Sharku to shine. Black Nomanorians are popping off. I like that. I, like, I would like to see them more often, but I believe they are not very, very strong for the price, because 400 each. And by the time you get them on the field, uh, which requires your building to be level 2, of course, uh, your opponent will have always some answer, like Warc Riders, for example. Warc Riders with leadership of Sharku, and then the whole ability, should be just enough to burst down this Black Numan audience. The Furnace has been taken down, Isengard has 500 command points available, and Engma has 700. Look the money from Engma. Guys, he's going for, for Witch King. Do you see the money? He's going for the Witch King of Engma. I would like to see Witch King of Engma when this Lourdes gets level 4. Which is gonna happen very soon, right? So, level 4, Cripple, Carnage. Because Witch King is very, very tanky, but I would, I would like to see Witch King when he comes... For example, he comes out from the Fortress, level 1. Runs into Lourdes, Lourdes is crippling him, then Sharku and Lourdes clump against him and take him down the second he comes. He's going for the Witch King indeed, Witch King is on his way. A very tanky hero, permanent debuff with level 2, very strong debuff. So it's gonna be like a permanent cave pads, but even more than that. Because cave pads is gonna reduce your damage by 25-25, but the passive debuff from Witch King by 33% damage. That means your units, I mean the enemy units, when you have Witch King are gonna deal one quarter less, one third less damage. Which is a lot. And also lose all the leadership bonuses, of course. Whiteman of Dunland summon also from the Engma player, from the Isengard player. The Snowbind is gonna be used to save this mill. Witch King is getting recruited now. There are two level 3 mills he might be switching to attack. Because Snowbind is going to be on cooldown now for a long time. Charku is also almost level 5. Black Nomonorians are going to get trampled down by the Warc Riders. But they are not taking too much damage in the old crown stands. They're actually kind of more resistant than I was expecting them to be. Uh, Lourdes is somewhere around this side. Where is Lourdes at? There he is. Hiding. Almost level 4. Again, that's going to unlock the cripple. As Witch King of Engma is arriving on his Black Horse. Black Horse. In Middle Earth to support the Engman player, Mr. Smog to victory. No man can kill me. Yeah. Oh, Felwind. Nice Felwind. He has also splash damage, by the way. Like hitting very, very hard. Watch, watch now when he gets the chance to hit. Boom! <laughs> Do you see? Dude! No way. He got almost level 3 with one hit. <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> Oh no, he killed almost all the war riders with one hit only. Just like that. Witch King. Witch King, what you doing? <laughs> uh oh. Boom. Look, he's knocking him up. Level 3 already. Level 4, I believe. Yeah, he's gonna unlock the Morgul Corruption. Which is something like a cripple ability from Lords, but it does not last that long. And then you have Screech and you have the Hour of the Witch King, which can reset all the power point, uh, all the spells. And powers from a hero to just used. Like everything is gonna go on cooldown, pretty much. But I think not very strong. Like there are much, much stronger level 8, level 10s than this one. He's level 4, cripple him. Oh, 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 boom! Holy guacamole! Look, he's hitting hard as 
Okay, that's gonna be a 1v1. Ditch King against the Mighty Lords. Look, Lord's damage. What's happening here? Like magic. Look, Lord's damage. Warchant? Look, Lord's. And you guys are telling me, no, Lord's is not the most cost efficient hero in the game, dude. He just killed Witch King. Witch King is gone. Le Lord's level 5. He tried, to he tried even hard to save him. He was using Vites and everything, you know? And I believe he, he lost Lords, yeah. He lost Lords, but I think it's fine. I mean, you would also trade your Lords for Witch King all day long. And yeah, the Vestation was used one more time. 550 command points available for the Isengard player. He's getting some more Pikemen on, uh, and more units on the field. Ingmar lost the Witch King. Pikes didn't do much there. The main, the main damage from him was, I mean, the main damage dealer was still Lords. Trust me on that one. Lords is Carnage, 200 percent damage. Lords is sitting hard. He doesn't have that much armor when he's using Carnage, but 200 percent damage boost. That's a lot, you know. And he's also attacking way faster with the Carnage. 13 power points collected by Isengard player. He can go for the, he can go for the uh, Field of Fires, right? If he can do that, that would be awesome, because he can get some money from the map. There are a bunch of trees on this map, right? You can build multiple um, uh, lumber mills to get some money. Sharku is almost level 6. 14 power points collected now. The mill has been taken down. They have also Wormtong on the field, by the way. <laughs> a hero like a... Look how he's getting to the back line, killing a Trial Master unit just like... Oh, 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 don't, 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 don't lose connection, I'm telling you. I'm telling you. 15 power points now for the Isengard. Don't, don't, don't. Okay. I was scared for a second. Whiteman of Dunland coming from Engma from the inn at the bottom right side with torches. Jarku is almost level 6. Level 7 is gonna unlock the main eater. Engma has, I mean, Eisen has three, Isengard has only 400 command points available and Engma has 725. I, oh, Felwind? But I believe this Felwind is not going to achieve too much. Sharku is going to be definitely getting away from this fight. There is no way he can get be, he can get caught. And uh, you need to revive Lords too. Lords, Sharku, and Wormtongue. Those are going to be the three main heroes from Isengard. The only hero missing is going to be, of course, Saruman the White. Uh, but he doesn't have the money to save for him just yet. But Field of Fire is going to help him. That's going to help him a lot. That means 70% more money from the Lumber Mills, guys. That's a lot of extra cash. That's a lot of cash. Um, normally, this is not happening, you know? Normally, this is not happening. Like, because the games are, are need to be played on a neutral host. That's the reason why. Oh, Whiteman of Dunland, defensively. Jarku is hitting level 6, it's a big commitment, but I, be I believe Isengard will be able to defend himself. He's trying to keep this level 3 furnace alive. And he's fine. He's fine. He's fine. Lords is level 5, leadership unlocked. And yeah, you can get Witch King back on the field, but that's gonna happen once again. As soon as Lords sees Witch King, he will cripple him down, then he has 30 seconds. Less than that. Because Cripple got nerfed this patch. By 5 seconds, the duration of Cripple got nerfed by 5 seconds. But still, 25 seconds cripple duration is a lot of time to take him down with this army. And also, uh, he's using escape, and he has also debuff, right? So whenever uh, Keith pads are gonna be on cooldown, he can... Look, this is useless. Do you see that? He's not using it now for a really long time. I'm actually curious if he's trying to uh, revive his Witch King. I can't tell. Isengard is moving forward with double buff. I think Warchan is still kinda active for a couple of more seconds. Debuff is available from the spellbook. The mill is gonna be taken down, and Isengard is kinda turning this game around. And maybe Engma is gonna be in trouble, guys. Engma might be in trouble. 825 command points still for Smoky, though. He has a lot of money, he has a lot of mills. He was expanding very nicely to get these mills. Level 3, level 3, level 3. These three mills are very important, and also at the bottom side, he was expanding. Isengard play on the other side has 575 command points, but he has Lumber Mills now. I see three, four Lumber Mills, which means money, 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 because he gets 70% more from the, the from the Field of Fires, and this game isn't over yet. 
He is grouping now in the middle with his army. The Wildmen of Dunland are going to be gone very soon, but he has crossbow, man. He's building a lookout tower. I believe the Witch King is going to be back on the field very soon. All of the Kingsman is level 2. He needs to get some rangers, but for that reason, he needs to first of all invest 500 for the Hall of the Kingsman level 3. That is the plan. Charco is almost level 7. And soon the siege might begin. You know, siege might begin. Engmar has to play defensively because he cannot afford to move forward. There is an army of Isengard he has to deal with first. Witch King is already back in the business. Yeah, 5 seconds less stun. So the cripple from Lourdes now stuns you 5 seconds less. It was 30 seconds if I'm not mistaken. Now it does cripple you for 25 seconds. Okay. Ophelwind. Cripple him. You have to cripple him. Otherwise, if he gets into the line and attacks you. If he attacks you one time here. Oh, oh, they are both crippling each other. <laughs> okay. Use Carnage, but it's a 1v1 now. Okay. Lourdes is not attacking. Lourdes. Use Carnage, dude. He's trying to run for his life. Can he get away? The fact I think he can get away, right? Get away! The Witch King. Who kills Witch King now? Lord is running for his life. They both crippled, but of course, like you can notice yourself, the moral corruption doesn't last as long as the cripple from Lord. The wolves are hungry. He's turning, but he's gonna be eaten alive. The tower in the middle is going down, and the Witch King is surviving this one. Lord is not on the field anymore that means you know which king can do whatever he wants and he's indeed ready for a massive counter-attack let me check his power points he has white summon he has orc summon which was used in this fight and if he collects eight more power points he can go for either um the blight or also the giant summon giant summon can also be very nice when you have an army like this to siege the base or the fortress from isengard player you know they have been very strong to disable them. Exactly, Gene. Big, big commitment. Uh, he got crippled down by Witch King and turning into a white. Wormtongue has been taken down. Witch King now, who can counter him? And Ave Ave is saying, what, what, what is that? Does the Morgul Corruption have no cooldown? It's indeed recharging quite fast, as you can see. And yeah, Sharko can do much. Cripple. This is actually not bad, this Morgul Corruption. I take it back. Not bad. But we have Saruman on the field now. The White Wizard. Uh, but he's level 1. The thing is, with level 1, you can't do much. You need to be getting him at least level 2 for the Fireball. Then, you know, you can use Fireball multiple times to get actually, you know, experience here and there. And once you get him level 6 with the Thunderbolt, he's going to be very impactful. Oh, Rogash. Rogash, the troll of the north. Look at this, guys. Look look how mad he's looking like. He's level 1, 2. Uh, which means he needs some experience. He needs to be level 5 for the leap attack. Unlike Gimli, who, un who gets it with level 2, I believe. And then the level 7 is going to unlock your rage of the north, which means 100, 100. Same stats like Aragorn is getting from the Blade Master. But Rogash has to get level 7 first. Engma has now really strong new heroes, like he was not going for Voldem, he was not going for Morgomir, he was not going for Karsh, but he was getting Rogash and Witch King. So two of the more expensive heroes of the game for Engma. Nice one. Okay, Saruman best hero, I like Saruman too, I like him a lot. I mean, for Isengard, he's a really great hero in Rise of the Witch King. He has a lot of tools. I like him. He's also, I mean, I like this. <clears throat> I like the fact that you can use Fireball and Thunderbolt from a safe distance. Because the thing, oh, look at this Rogash damage against the Pikeman. Hitting very hard. They have now double splash, right? Rogash and Witch King. So it's hard to be clumped against this army now. Because clumped, you will feed them more. Witch King is lot, what's level almost 6, level 6 is gonna unlock the Screech, but once uh, Saruman is getting level 5, he's gonna have the passive fear resistance, which is gonna shut down the fear, fear effect, in this case from Screech. The Lamin Miller has been taken down. Oh, Karsh is also on the field, Karsh is also here. Uh, Smoky is going for all the Engma heroes now, we are only missing out Voldo. Saruman got Felwinded, Mortal Bleeded. It's old man, he needs one hour to be stand up. Oh, fireball, but oh, Witch King. Oh, that's a that's a nice picture, though. Witch King. Oh, he's turning Saruman 
into a vault. Yes, enough power points for the for the giant summon. He got crippled down by Lords. Lords is throwing the sword, but it's a one versus twenty situation. Rogash against oh Karsh, Rogash, Witch King, everyone. <laughs> but on <laughs> Havi Havi is gonna be defeated just like that. Witch King, Rogash, Karsh, what else do you need? Smokey is gonna win the best of seven series, guys. Just like that. And protect his spot in the top ten list. GG's well.